Hello oh, and welcome to uh, Indie Apocalypse Radio. Once again, I am your host. Uh, what's it called, Andrew? That's my name. I was like, "What's it called?" <laughs> my, <laughs> what's my name? Huh? Huh? Who knows? Uh, but no, my name's Andrew. I run Indie Apocalypse. I was. I've got to put this thing the way that I'm playing with because I was talking about uh, constructing my whole what you call it gotcha pod machine in the pre-game uh, chat that you don't get to hear so i was playing around with the knife that i used to build it and i was like i'm not gonna f- do knife tricks uh for while i'm doing a show i need to sit here and do a show and that show of course is uh indie apocalypse radio uh the the number one resource for people who want to hear about indie apocalypse and indie apocalypse adjacent things i suppose uh or just want to hear about food and wanted me to unlock the secrets of Tesco meal deals and all that stuff. Uh, but all that aside, we've got a guest who you uh, may know from uh, issue 40 of Indie Apocalypse with Adrift Going Nowhere and Wish Corp. It's Shalagoon. Hello, how are you doing today? Hello. Yeah, great, thanks. Uh, cheers for inviting me on to the show. No, g- glad to have you on the show. Uh Every 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 submission to Indie Apocalypse comes with an unofficial. Hey, uh, hey, why don't you be on the show too? Uh, Amazing. Because <laughs> uh, I love to, I love to just kind of uh, get people in the get, get people in a room together. You know. Oh, it's totally, a- and that, that's that's one of the things that's like so fantastic about Indie Apocalypse, like you know, creating that community and uh, really like boost the game scene. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, one second. I have to. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, someone is messaging me something. Uh, <laughs> at the moment. So, this is a little bit of the pledge drive. Uh, you got a flavor of this. You go to the Indie Apocalypse pledge drive, which is Andrew is typing while he's trying to talk. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We're back. Full attention. I've returned. Uh, uh, someone was like, you want to do this thing? I was like, yes, but I'm hosting a radio show right now. I'm busy. Uh, speaking of busy and people finding me, Shalagoon, I have an important question that I need to get at the top of, the head, uh, top of it oh, all. Cool. Uh, how did you hear about Indie Apocalypse? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, f- I think it was... Um through itch.io uh the game jam function i I was i was just scrolling uh looking for like projects to get involved with um and uh and it came up and i thought this is an absolutely fantastic opportunity i'll uh i'll send some projects in and see see how it goes yeah (laughs) yeah that's that's kind of like now uh, as part of as part as as a second part of this informal uh marketing survey that is the first question of indie apocalypse did the fact that it said paying (laughs) anthology help motivate you Oh, uh, yeah, slightly, slightly. Uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of freelance stuff at the moment, yeah. so uh, it's, it's always fantastic when uh, when things are paid because, uh, you know, there's so many signs out there that are, like, fantastic, awesome projects. But, like, there, there comes a point where there's, there's only so much uh, work that you can do for free. Right. But, uh, you know, I love to do it. <laughs> and I'm asking, you to, I'm asking you to do no work and then also to get paid for it. <laughs> Amazing, even better! What an yeah. amazing opportunity. <laughs> that that is that's an important part of it for me is the like the whole hey, what if I what if you don't have to make any new games? What if you just take what you already have? Yeah, I think I've one, one really interesting like uh, facet of a project as well is getting to be part of design and yeah. creating a like a zine page, uh, which which was fantastic because uh, like most of the time I make the games, put them out there. And uh, and kind of leave them. So like re- revisiting those projects and uh, kind of like uh, reflecting on them and uh, converting them into like these uh, these graphics and like writing some extra uh, back uh, context for them was that a really interesting experience? Yeah, yeah. I love. I I encourage people to always, even if they're like not uh, graphic designers, to try and like make their own pages because I think they could describe like what the essence of their game is better than I could. And uh, 
sometimes I am not a graphic designer and it shows. <laughs> sometimes though, I think my pages turn out very good when I make them. But plenty of times I'm oh, like, definitely, definitely. there's like, there's a reason it's <laughs> yeah. a job that people have and it's a skill that they work hard to, to perfect, you know? Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, I've been with working as a graphic designer from having uh, worked those sort of jobs before. Yeah. Quite a lot of the stuff is you go in with all these amazing ideas, but then most of it's just editing fonts, like <laughs> choosing from a giant list of like 300 plus fonts. Right. <laughs> and then most of the clients. But yeah, uh, with, with with the zine, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Like so, some of the images that people create for their games are, are just gorgeous. Like, you know, they're, they're, they're mesmerizing, really like capture your attention. Yeah, uh, which is really cool. No, I, I, <laughs> I truly like uh, love to, like people's kind of like how their interpretations of their games oh. and like how they kind of uh, you know express like oh well, and, uh, you know especially like uh, some people's post mortems are like they're single pages, but sometimes they're also like as abstract as some of the, as like some of the games that they're making. I like the idea of oh, just being definitely, definitely. <laughs> it being like another space for people to like express uh, the ideas of the games and themselves in general, and it's great for physical events. It's very eye grabbing. Oh, uh, absolutely! Yeah, I've, I've, I think the post mortem was probably one of my favorite parts of a project, um, just because like just just getting to have the context of like, uh, you know, like how the game kind of came together. Uh, where where it is now and like where where you were at the time of making it it's just like a really interesting like extra element yeah and yeah because yeah, you, like usually you get like devlogs and stuff um like you know they, they sort of break down some of the projects are kind of few and far between but like they, it's it's always fascinating and kind of like re really like getting into them and uh, uh you know just just finding out about like um where these people were at that point in their life which right. is fantastic yeah, because sometimes uh, was your issue the one that had a luxury luxury simulator in it? Ah, uh, I, I think remember. There, there was one that um, the drift going nowhere uh, kind of culminated in like a like a slightly shitty fishing game. Um, no, no, no. I'm saying the, uh, the, the no. I know. I know oh. your games. Uh, <laughs> your issue. Uh, no, it did not. Okay. Oh no. yeah. No, because <laughs> sorry about that. What what you were describing was a post mortem someone had written uh uh for the game Luxury Simulator. Uh, oh nice. Rebecca Merrill, I believe, is the phone like the yes. Uh, she had written like she hadn't touched it in like five years or whatever. Uh, oh amazing. And, like, it was reflecting on like revisiting it because sometimes I will like do that. I'll like, you know, because there are these sort of uh you know indie blog classics and things that kind of make the circuits, but they're like not commercial games. So after, uh, the blogs, probably half of them die. Um, Oh, these, definitely. These games yeah. Kind I, of just I, vanished I, to the ether. <laughs> definitely the case. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's, that's fascinating what you're saying, Mo, because I, I, I think, I think with time, like it, it really does change your perception on your, projects like you know yeah. like so, something you can reflect on and so some kind of hold up and uh, there's, there's other times where you're like looking at it going through it and thinking oh i could have done these changes but like you know there's there's, there's like definitely like an authenticity to it um yeah and put, pulling those projects back up like uh yeah like with, with with like a few years like you you almost forget some of the parts that you put into them so yeah uh, like, you know, you, you you almost get to experience it uh, as as like a observer, which uh, which is uh, just really interesting. <laughs> right, right, because it's like <laughs> uh, you you have you kind of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Right, you are you're detached from your project, and I feel like game design is also very built on like you, you know, got to. I mean, it's not just game design; it's just art in general. Got to hustle to the new project. Got to hustle to the new project everywhere, and it kind of leaves you not thinking so much about whatever your previous project happened to be because especially if it's like not a the runaway success that it, ne it needs to be you can't like uh, it's like well i gotta be the next thing so i get food <laughs> um, oh definitely 
Yeah, I think I, th- I think with projects, uh, sometimes when they come out, like when when they underperform, like it it is sometimes best to like distract yourself by like diving straight into the next project and be like, oh, this yes. time, this time it's gonna work. <laughs> right, right. That is. <laughs> It's definitely something that can be a bit sore because I've I've definitely had one or two that have come out before that have like you know you you have like a really good feeling about it in the time and you kind of put putting all your eggs in into it and being like yes come on come on and it comes out and just kind of flatlines. It's like oh. <laughs> that that's that's me going ah this 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 next issue this will be the one this no no this one this will be the one. Uh, uh, it's helpful to do a project every single month and you're like. Uh, you just keep doing it uh, because you never have to worry about one being successful, you know, ultra successful because there's always the next one. Uh, and then eventually, oh, definitely. eventually you don't have to worry about this idea of success at all. Uh, and then you, I don't know, let someone else worry about that. But speaking about games uh, and making them and all that stuff, tell, before we get to you, but tell me what, uh, Assuming I was a stranger who never played these games, what is a drift going nowhere and wish corp, or are a drift going nowhere and wish corp? They're two different things. Mm, right. So uh, I'd say a drift going nowhere um, was kind of this game that was uh, kind of brought about by a very uncertain period in a uh, you know my life. Like my uh, my job had just fallen free, and uh, and su- subsequently we we were having to uh, to to move out of our house. So it, it it was kind of a it's kind of like this bittersweet reflection on kind of where you assumed kind of as a child you you'd have been with life and then kind of <laughs> the, the, the the slightly bitter reality of the situation just just kind of like pondering that and then uh and then uh kind of it culminates in a in a fun little fishing experience um which uh you know and and ends up being this nice uh kind of infinite game loop that, that you can play as much or as little as you like which is quite fun and um wish corp on the other hand um is kind of, kind of like a reflection of like uh the kind of corporate life <laughs> uh you know like being, being in the office and kind of gradually having like bits of yourself like chipped away yeah like <laughs> Yeah, well, like in, in in like a very cynically written package. <laughs> <laughs> I I, th- I think uh, 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 cynicism around uh, corporate drudgery is more than welcome. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that's that's the fantastic thing about indie games. Like, there's so many that like explore that and like really kind of like make make you question like you, your own life and your own situations, but in like a interactive way so it's kind of like um you know like with books and like videos uh yeah. and like films and stuff it's kind of like a static reflection but like actually being able to like physically inhabit in some sense you know despite you know the digital sense um like with the controllable aspects it kind of ele- elevates the experience a little bit yeah and uh it makes it almost more personal like when, when like it, when games really strike that chord it's very impactful. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking more about recently, or I'm not thinking more, but it's come to front of mind again about games and the idea of games that are like non-literal because I feel oh. like that is uncommon, at least uh, definitely in the commercial space, but even like to some extent within the indie space. This And that is like, I've been thinking about the, the non-literal spectrum in art, you know, where like mm. plenty of times paintings and like, poetry or it can be very abstract and they don't literally mean exactly what they say but uh how that is less common as you get to like well i'm watching a movie so i'm of course the things that are happening on the screen are the real things they're actually characters not uh, you know abstract representations of characters and ideas that you would see in literature and i wonder if games where you are since you are controlling a person uh Maybe there's like that less of a connection to like or less this non-literal sense or whatever, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting how like people explore that as well. There's a, I, I you know I think some games do that phenomenally well. Yeah. Um, I I I I think I think intrinsically with games like um, it, there's 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 always like some elements of like the storyteller slash. M developer, but, you know, because 
um you know you can't write it from like a completely out of body experience there'll always be like these like snippets of yourself that are kind of like woven through which uh which is fascinating yeah. like you know it can be told in like a really abstract setting which which is very cool <laughs> yeah because you you can I mean, you can't uh i the more you try to remove the self from the art the usually the more boring it gets <laughs> um Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. There's, there's, there's some games that can be very dry. I've, 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 I think mobile games uh, suffer from that in particular. Like, you know, a lot of the times, like, it's like a very small experience. And then, like, you know, you're, you're playing, like, 30 seconds in, and then, like, big ads come up, like, and just yes. completely ruin the pacing of it. <laughs> yeah, that is a whole other, like... It's so weird that, like, the mobile games are like the they expected to be free um just because they're oh, I mean, someone someone later on the show might have feelings about that in particular <laughs> who knows um, but oh definitely yeah but there's there's things but like that that like really do make you like miss the, the one-time purchase that uh, the games used to have but there's, yeah. there's 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 also many ways in which like the game scene's got like you know, it's significantly better, I think. Like, you know, like how broad it is. Like, you, you know, these days you're getting, like, stories from you know, people from, like, all walks of life, which, like, before it was, like, a lot harder to get those experiences yeah. into the hands of people en masse. Yeah, um, yeah, the the kind of opening of publishing and, like, easy publishing oh. platforms, like, you know, like Itch and Game Jolt. And, I mean, Newgrounds has always been around, but back then the tools weren't as accessible and, like, you know, Flash is not a game programming tool, or it's not an easy one. Oh no, totally. Yeah, I, 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 th- I think with, uh, with Flash, like it's, it's a real shame that like the browsers, uh, kind of like <laughs> made, made that push to kill that off. Uh, you yeah, know, because there were so, so many like, you know, so, so, such a wealth of creativity that almost vanished overnight. Right. Like, and... you, you know, there's platforms like Newgrounds and stuff that are still active and very much alive yeah but they, it's just... I th- they built a whole other like flash player or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah there, there's, there's been some amazing tools there was a uh, kind of just off the back of the um push away from uh swf files um swivel came out which was really good which uh was a piece of software which would allow you to convert those to videos yeah and uh, yeah because like a, a lot of places such as Newgrounds implemented like um, a lot of like heavy video features, right? Uh, kind of right off the back of that, so that the content would still be accessible. I think with Newgrounds in particular, one thing that was a real shame with that was um, it killed a lot of the interactivity. Like yeah. part, part of the fun of it was like the UI design. I'd say like so, some of these projects had like these amazing, uh, like amazingly immersive um menus which w- would sometimes have like games themselves like buried within them and uh you know like d- tidbits and like bonuses yeah k- kind of like the sort of thing that you'd find on like a dvd but yeah. uh that kind of almost got wiped out unfortunately like i uh, with ui and stuff that was actually my introduction to uh these interactive projects and stuff i started by uh in the ui <laughs> design and organization of like a few collaborations and stuff like uh, the, the designs back then weren't fantastic that I was doing because um, I was quite young, but it was yeah. very fun and ultimately kind of like led me to uh, to the place that I am now <laughs> with stuff creatively. Yeah, yeah, and I wonder how that affects like because it's it's always interesting to see people from from artistic different artistic background into like what is your because you uh, have you used a different you used uh, do you have like a, a specific engine that you prefer or do you kind of just mess around with uh, whatever you think will suit your needs at the time because i know i had to uh i had to crack open an engine for the first time in, in a while and be like how do i Gosh. load yeah, a project so to this <laughs> yeah mo- mo- most of the games it's kind of a you know I, I i tend to explore a lot of like uh different engines because uh some of them have like uh you know like massive benefits and yeah stuff. um yeah, so uh, so the engines that I use for the games in the indie apocalypse were uh, Bitsy, but with the Bitsy 3D extension, which is super cool, uh, super powerful tool. Yeah, um, which ho- hopefully more people start using. And uh, the second one was um, oh gosh, what was it? It was Tyranno Builder. I, Tyranno I Build, yeah. Because I had to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, behind the scenes work i had to like make a pc version of it 
Yeah, it, it's it's tricky. They they yeah. used to allow um, Max to to publish um, ones with the Windows uh, extensions, but I, I I think the last uh, the last two updates ago they uh, they changed that. They took out that feature, I guess, because yeah. of like licensing disagreements or something, which was a real shame. Um, yeah, I I I'd, I'd say it, um, yeah with with the engines. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I explore a lot of them, uh, and, but I I my my preference is uh, ones that are like quite lax on the code in front because I'm not a fantastic coder. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's why I'm always curious. Is like, do you just like <laughs> don't bother to learn uh, an mm. engine and you just kind of hop back and forth to whatever engine, uh, whatever kind of pre-built suits you the best. Yeah, I, 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 I think, I think, but in doing so, like you pick up like a lot of um, kind of like interesting, useful uh, design methods. Um, like the, the, the sort of stuff that my projects tend to explore is um, like the graphics and storytelling. Um, yeah, because I'm a graphic designer first, uh, game dev second sort of thing. It's, right. it's really interesting, like getting in, stuck into the meat of a project. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, that, that is one thing that I wish I would do more. Like, uh, just take the time to like knuckle down, learn the code, and uh, really like improve the interactivity because there's so much you can do there, and it's uh, yeah, it's really interesting and fascinating. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I I love more as tools expand. It's kind of it reduces the whole uh, the technical aspects to getting into game development, like the like the raw coding, like making things appear on screen, which I think helps to be like, gets you closer to like figuring out like the artistic uh, difficulties of making a game. Not just like, how do I make this guy run? But how do I make this guy's run feel good? Uh, or like, oh, definitely. <laughs> it's like, imagine approaching film and be like, wait, how do I turn the camera on and record images? Oh, of course. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think I think one thing that's quite difficult about getting into game dev is like trying to learn like the, the, the coding side up front. Right. There's like a lot of things that you wouldn't expect, but you come up against quite quickly, like um, yeah, like how 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 to make it run like smoothly and like not like just eat up the data consumption. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I've, I've I've done a few with coding, but like just getting like um, that under check. So it doesn't completely lag out people's computers. Yes, right. It's, it's far more difficult than you'd expect. No, and, that, you know, I mean, hey. if, if you're approaching it from like a this is the story that I want to tell, these are the visuals I want to tell, that that is quite like a roadblock that is quite like <laughs> difficult to power through. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> hey, that's there's your benefit. There's your strength. One of your strengths of Bitsy there. <laughs> I don't Ooh, have to worry oh, about definitely. burning out anyone's yeah, computer it, on that. But yeah. <laughs> There's a there's some fantastic ones that are uh, coming out as well. Like uh, so, Bitsy came out a, a few years ago, which really opened up the medium to a lot of people. Like right. it's it's really fascinating going to like uh, game shows and like seeing when people um, implement Bitsy uh, for their projects there because they, they they so often tell like deeply personal stories and just open it up to people that want to tell those stories in a interactive medium but wouldn't traditionally have. Um, the, it, well, yeah, like uh, you know, it kind of breaks down the barriers and uh, yeah. it opens the doors for a lot, uh, a lot more people to like experiment with, which uh, you know is by, uh, by and large a fantastic thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it kind of just like it, it's kind of like what, what Twine did, you know, so many mm. years ago. Whereas, like, here's a very easy to use thing uh, that helps you make uh, stories in a specific way, and it's oh, like definitely. also in browser basically uh mm. so it, yeah, it, it, it makes things make it makes it easy to make games uh it's, oh, it's... of course I, I i think with these uh kind of softwares as well the fantastic thing is a lot of them do have the capability to add to your own code and expand upon it so there, yeah. there's still like the benefit to like learning the hard skills and uh you know like technical programming abilities because you can take one of those uh engines take like the basic tools and expand it into something maybe yeah. much greater uh w which is awesome <laughs> but it lets you it gives you it lets you make something without having to go into those those that deep end first you know oh definitely definitely uh, it, it keeps you from getting discouraged but speaking of uh, uh deep ends we're already at 
the deep end of the segment, if you believe it. it were, uh, <laughs> the time does fly by uh, so Oh, quickly. my goodness, yeah. <laughs> but before, uh, before whatchamacallit, uh, I end this segment, I have an important question for you, which was uh, previously from a guest. Now it's just like a thing I am personally curious about. I think it's a... A weird litmus test of things. Uh, I shall going to have to ask you, uh, do you have a favorite Toho character? Oh. Oh, yes. wait. Is that, uh, is that the one that does uh, One Piece and such? Be, no, no, that um, is... Okay, no, that is that is a kind so, of Toho. Is that Toho to animation? To, no, Toho... <laughs> uh, I, 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 uh, if you could imagine my better pronunciation, I have a poor pronunciation of it. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, there's a U after those two O's. After each of those O's follows a U, so it's more like Toho, but I don't oh, like, uh, I don't uh, kind of have, I don't hit it properly, but I'm guessing the answer is no then. Um, uh, and I, like, I, I guess my, my, my question would be, uh, what is Toho? Oh, it's, uh, I think our next guest is going to, has a lot of uh, feelings so about sorry. Toho. Uh, I can can provide you with an explanation, but it's like a it's a it's a series of doji games. It's a bullet hell. It's neat. I think it's cool. Uh, with that said, like I I I I'm, it's something I'm definitely gonna have to explore. <laughs> do you ha- okay? So let me ask you a question then. Do you have a favorite Toei character? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, one 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 scan. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I wish I anyway. did. Thank you, thank you for joining me here uh, on this segment. I hope you can stick around for the group segment afterwards. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, but, thank you but, so much for inviting me to be a part of this. No, no, thank you for being on the show in the zine and, you know, just getting into game making in general, you know? That's what that's, it's oh, all amazing. about. Thank you. <laughs> in the meantime, we're going to go on break, and I'll be back in, like, you know, two minutes and nine seconds, approximately. Oh, uh, awesome. Be right back. Oops. Hello and welcome back to Indie Apocalypse Radio. Uh, that was Say Sumi with their cover of Honk If You're Lonely, uh, which I think I've played on here before. But man, I love that cover. It just rules so much. I oh no, this little this little guy Discord's afraid of him. This little hopping guy, whatever. You're gonna have to deal with the weird. I'm gonna have to fix that while I do the show. Uh, but if you're wondering, I'm talking about weird hopping guy. Uh, that the weird hopping guy is our visual representation of our next guest, who's on the show, who you may know not from Indie Apocalypse, but uh, just you know, gaming in general, video gaming. The uh, the game boss game, the final boss is in my heart. It's Lily Valine. Hello, Lily. How are you doing today? Hey there. How's it going? Oh, it's going I'm, I'm great. Doing pretty well, I would say. Perfect. I'm trying to think of how I'm going to fix this little poppy bro. <laughs> um, oh, I don't think you have to worry about it. He's, okay. He's exploding anyway, so I figure, like, yeah, it, it, it's it's aesthetically yeah. where it needs to be. This is this is the uh, the creepy pasta version of uh, a poppy bro is blowing himself up. Uh, I was like, I was playing Kirby and this poppy bro. He started getting all these glitchy artifacts over him, <laughs> and then he blew himself up. That is a, a perfect schoolyard rumor. And then you unlocked like the secret level, and there was a third Kirby boss where it's like Wispy Woods but red or something. Yeah, it, Wispy Woods, but it's his, he, and he's crying blood. Uh, uh. That's great. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, I've, I've said I don't feel bad about saying this, this multiple times on the show uh, because I don't know who knows when I'll be able to make games, but I really want to make a game that just seemed like a regular, like, uh, Hey, it's a retro style platform or whatever, but at the very beginning, it just like there's like this one in you know sixty thousand chance or something ridiculous that it just turns into a creepy pasta version of that game, so that I, only a, only a few people will ever see it, and they'll be like, "Why is my version of this game haunted?" <laughs> and like, yeah, no, like it has it has to be. You want to? You need to make a rumor generator. Right, right. It needs. It needs yeah. to actually not happen to everybody. Not be an actual. Uh, pl- I need plenty of people just to play a regular game that's just like Kirby, <laughs> but one out of sixty thousand is like has a cursed version. But that is a weird, broad idea. But speaking of uh, games, uh, you've made a game, and it is so. Uh, I. 
presuming even that people who are listening to this thing are indie apocalypse experts, uh, which who knows if that's the case, <laughs> but uh, not, having not a game in it, tell me what, what is, uh, tell me about your game. Tell me about boss game. A game I'm excited to play in July as a non-phone gamer. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. So Boss Game is a game that came out last year in October for phones. It is a lesbian romance boss rush um, where you play as two girlfriends who are broke and they are trying to hunt devils so that they can pay their rent. Perfect. Uh, A better uh, summation I would not ask. I do have this thing on top of my HP that says... Purchased 197 days ago, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I also my my phone until like a couple of months ago was actually also very bad. Oh jeez, yeah. It was like I buy a phone every five years or something. <laughs> when so- when the software begins to take up 80 percent of my phone storage, I think it's about time to, uh, or the OS rather. Yeah. Um, Usually like, for me, it's, it's like the phone. The phone starts dying after yes. like ten minutes of not being plugged in, and I'm like, okay, I got it. Yeah. This time. I fo- I fortunately <laughs> never had that problem before, so we're living living high life that way. I've also never cracked my phones, so I have never cracked my. No, that's not true. I I cracked my. I get, I dropped my phone once, and I tried to catch it with my foot, and yeah. I drop kicked it across the road. Okay, <laughs> I've. I've uh, dropped it plenty of times, and sometimes I catch it, uh, or oh, nice. I catch it on my foot. I've never, yeah, that's never. That's why you're been... a pro gamer. I am. I'm a pro gamer. I play. Uh... <laughs> Lily, are you a pro? Ga- would you classify yourself as a pro gamer? See, the thing is, I, I like. I would not consider myself a pro gamer, but I recently got to celestial rank and strive in Guilty Gear. Okay. So... I think there's like not an argument there that I am at least somewhat of a gamer. Yeah, that is. Like, I don't think I can downplay it anymore. Basically, I'm did you, kind of a gamer. Did Did you make it past the hump where did you or did you encounter the fighting game hump where you're like, I'm bad at this game. I hit a bunch of where you get like good enough the game to get bad at it. Yeah. Well, yeah. So like when you when you first start playing, I think you don't know what you're doing. And so you're not doing anything that is like, quote unquote, correct. Right. And that throws people who know how to play the game off um, for at least a little bit, because they'll be like, oh, they're pressing all these stupid moves like they're, they're doing stupid stuff that shouldn't work. And I'm getting hit by it. Right. Uh, and now I'm at the point where like people who are new will press moves that they definitely shouldn't press but it works so it's correct right like, yeah right that is yeah. it's the the true or uh, random gamer mentality you can't <laughs> you can't defeat no thoughts exactly yeah, it's, it's such a it's such a perfect anime like you fool i'll simply not i simply won't even think about what i'm doing right exactly it's, it's um, how you it's how you defeat the villain who can read your every movement mm-hmm. that's perfect uh, oh. I've I've been thinking more about fighting games, but I it, they take time, and I they do. I was like, I should get into uh, it's, it's mostly Street Fighter got me thinking about fighting games again. I have a lot of fighting games. I was like, I have you know, I'm a I'm not good at it, but I have an old imported PS2 Melty Blood. You know, I'm oh, in, really in deep. Uh, Melty Blood extent. looks wild. Melty Blood <laughs> is like. It's like it's weird. It's so weird to see that Melty Blood is like a thing now, because uh, I remember playing. It's like, oh, well, for one, I had to import it. Uh, it was not like an actual game I could get at the store. It's like you know, fully Japanese. It was like this game feels broken. It feels like uh, someone just like yeah, turn made a fighting game that said turn everything on, let them do whatever they want. <laughs> And yeah, no, it looks it looks like a totally. I it's it's funny because I got started with Strive. Yeah, and like Strive and Melty Blood are both like what people call anime fighters. Yes, which are like very much in a totally different like they're the same concept and like mechanics of something like Street Fighter. Yeah, but the speed of what things are happening and like the amount of movement there is. Yes, is, yeah, it's truly obscene. Yeah, there is. Uh, uh, it's like you know the demarcation doesn't have an air dash, you know. <laughs> Right. And that's why, like, I, I, I have a few friends who are getting into Street Fighter 6, so I'm probably going to check it out at some point. Yeah. And 
curious to know how how going from the super fast game to like a game where you can mostly just walk. Right, like, right. Okay, is this gonna be okay? <laughs> like, can I handle this? Right. It's it's why it's why gaming needs better, a stronger subgenreing. You know, because yeah, sure. like uh, Guilty Gear and Street Fighter are both fighting games uh, technically, um, <laughs> but they're both yeah. fighting games in the way that like. Uh, you know, like Friday the Thirteenth and The Witch are both horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I mean, like Portal is also technically a first-person shooter. But... Yes, <laughs> it's uh, technically a puzzle platformer, I guess. But yeah. so is I don't know, Braid. <laughs> 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 and oh, just, and it's like, yeah, is Kirby a puzzle platform? No, because there's no puzzles like, to solve. There's really not that many puzzles in Kirby. There's like little puzzles in Kirby. Is is Kirby a combat? Is Kirby a beat? Is Kirby a beat 'em up? Kirby's a little bit of a beat 'em up, actually. Like if you think about it, like I am okay, good. So yeah, growing up, I I basically like the only Kirby game I played was Kirby Superstar. Yes, so, I... I would go hang out with my friend, and we would beat Kirby Superstar like start to finish in a night, like as I was like during a sleepover or something. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's why I also love this GIF, but... No, it's truly, like, uh, one of the greatest games ever made, honestly. I I really love it, but, like, when you have played Kirby Superstar a bunch of times, like, it really plays like a beat-em-up where you just get whatever power you think is the most fun. Yeah. And you run through enemies, right? You just, you send them flying, they explode really satisfyingly, they, like, go flying off in directions, and you just running through this game you're solving all the little puzzles really quickly and stuff right. like that but it feels much like it's like a beat-em-up but it's a very like unchallenging beat-em-up for right. like it's not like streets of rage where you have to actually yeah. pay attention especially if you're if your preference is like a knuckle joe or whatever because then you can do like uppercuts and everything yeah i love knuckle joe and i used you're... to i think yo-yo is my favorite yeah there's okay we're gonna that there, <laughs> it's, it's such a beauty of like design it's like the perfect of like Kirby's whole ethos is like Nintendo, you know, coming up with ideas and just putting them into Kirby, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that is a whole game of what if we had uh, different ideas for Kirby? Uh, yeah, no, it, it's it's such a cool, they don't, I don't think I've seen a game that does the anthology same thing in the same way that right. like, Superstar does. Because like, this is not going to turn into a Kirby Superstar fan cast, but it's so like... <laughs> We can talk about other things too. I no, like no, Kirby. no. That's that's my own fault trying to turn into it. But like, like the start yeah. of not Stardust Memories. That's the what's the what's the one with the Milky Way, Milky Way, mi- Milky. Oh, Milky Way wishes. Yes, Milky Way wishes. Where it's like you can't eat enemies fundamentally. Yeah. It's like yeah. Suddenly it's like a Metroidvania or something. Yeah. It's like you're collecting items and like it's very cool. I I love it. Yeah, it's like it's it feels, you know. Like a little piece of like game design research, like you just sit there and play Kirby Superstar and go, ah, I felt like I learned a lot about I, this racing games and. Yeah, no, I like I, I. It's very cool to take like okay, so we built this engine, we built this platformer, you know, we built Kirby and like these thirty different power ups Kirby can get. Yeah. And we're just gonna remix that engine like eight times. Right. And it's very cool. Like it's it's a cool way to. It's probably also like much easier on them to be like, well, yeah, we made eight really short games that are just like different, me- like all of them are slightly different mechanically. Right. And that would be a like, you you think about like how much work it takes to come up with like a core mechanic for a game and to like make that core mechanic feel good and to like make it feel like a like a game that's really cool. Right. Imagine imagine something with the the like like you took Dark Souls and instead of it being Dark Souls, it was like. Eight games of Dark Souls where everything was a little different, but the combat is still Dark Souls combat, right? right? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah. Pitch- I'm pitching stuff to FromSoft now. No, yeah, I'll take that FromSoft pitch. Let me tell you, uh, yeah. I, 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 I made, I made, uh, I had, a, I had two rows in front of me the other day where it's like, do I play a bunch of FromSoft games or do I play a bunch of Tales games? And oh, really? <laughs> I decided, like, I'm going to play some Tales games. Uh, uh, I haven't played a Tales games in so long. They are, uh, they're, they are anime nonsense. <laughs> they, I, I really loved Tales of the Abyss. Yeah, I have not played, I'm on to uh, uh, Tales of Destiny. I'd recently finished Tales of Fantasia. 
Um, nice. But they're like, they're fun. They're like, also, it's Destiny's, it's fun to, I, I, I'm also kind of obsessed with that combat style. And I was like, uh, it's a thing I would oh, steal sure. and like take as like uh, beat em ups, but RPGs? Huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. It is a cool mix. I yeah. like. I, I like. I like anime non- nonsense, obviously, because yeah. like that's that's a huge part of what boss game is. Is like me channeling like shonen nonsense. Yes. Yeah. I, like, so much. I as someone who's like, I, I, I'm very excited to play this game. <laughs> it feels weird. Like I, <laughs> I thought for a second, like I should have downloaded an APK and put it on my phone at some point. But I was like, I just. Everyone has their I, things, and I just am not a phone <laughs> gamer. This is this is why I made Boss Game. Though. I made yeah. Boss Game so that people can pick it up and play it on their phones, yes. and they can message me and go, "How the hell did you do that?" Yeah, like, <laughs> like finally something for the phone gamers. <laughs> I, I like seriously, like I, it was it was such a huge self challenge. Like I, I I like like I like making games where I'm like, all right, this sounds really stupid, but let's yeah. see if I can make it work. And like I was, I was like, okay, what if I tried to make like very gay Dark Souls, but for the phone? Yeah. And I was like, how how would you make something with that sort of tempo and feel on like a device that is notoriously terrible for like reactive, speedy, responsive gaming? Yeah, and and we are we are partially uh, broaching the subject in like the first segment of like uh, you know w- why don't people just make more like games you know for just phones? <laughs> it yeah. feels like. Well- yeah, but, sorry. Because we all have them. <laughs> it's our most like universal device, almost. Actually, yeah, no, that's that's that was just like so much of my thought process was like, okay, it it's a huge waste that we all have this like ubiquitous gaming device that is is renowned for just the worst kinds of games. Right, right. It is like I, I can't give you any money to get gotcha pictures of new girlfriends, right? No, God, yeah, no, that was like. <laughs> I had when I when I was telling my friends about this, they were like, "You should like." I was like, "I'm trying to like, I'm trying to make this game, you know. I, I'm not gonna get rich off this or whatever, but like, right. I'd like to charge money for it and stuff." And they're like, "You should like the best way to do that is probably to put ads in it." And I was like, "I would rather hit myself with a shovel." Yes, I. <laughs> like, I yeah no of course and like and and there was like I don't know what the time period was it might have been like 2012 or 13 where like there were there was like a small time period before everyone figured out what gotcha was yeah and then like and there were tons of cool weird super good little mobile games that like they had like 868 hack and we had like sword and what's it not sword and sorcery is it yeah sword and sorcery ep or swords and sorcery yeah swords and sorcery yeah 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 there's all sorts of weird little games. There were like even Angry Birds is like relatively, you know, you you would buy it for a buck and it was a satisfying little arcade game or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and now it's like nowadays it wouldn't be a buck. It would be like here's three. an ad. You can wait thirty seconds or you can pay five bucks to skip the ad for three days or whatever. Right, right. Or or, or it's like oh you hit your bird gate. Your bird stats are too low. <laughs> you have to buy more birds. Right, right. There's Roll like, for better birds. I I do. I've talked about it on the show before, but I I do have a fascination with like loading up what's it called? Uh, like loading up Nox or blue sorry blue stacks is, uh, and, and like the, oh sure and like seeing what the wall is of like free to play gotcha games like how do they like what they use as their wall? Sure. It's always like an interesting thing to be like. Uh, why do I have to pay money for this game? What is stopping me from act? Because they, they they are actively stopping you from playing their games, and it's interesting. It is. It is so. It is. It is the weirdest thing to me that it has become so established as like a genre in itself that like when I see new gacha games come out, like the new oh, was it Honkai Star Rail or whatever, or any any yes. anything like that, it doesn't matter. Any gacha game. Uh, and they'll put out in the trailer, and they'll be like, "This game's coming out. It looks good. Look at all these cute anime characters. Look at all these hot babes. Like, yeah. you want to play this game?" And then, like in the announcement, it'll be like twenty free rolls, new yes. game. And I'll be like, "You're advertising that you're going to charge me money, like in the advertisement." Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I did, I did what I did with uh, Genshin Impact, which I installed Honkai Star Rail for like 
an hour and I was like, if I just want to level up anime characters, I have a million other games I can play. Yeah. <laughs> and they finish and they have stories and Yeah, they have actual like personality in them. Yeah, they're not just uh, cute anime characters. Um there's yeah. plenty of there's pl- if you want cute anime people, let me tell you about the world of Japanese role playing games. Oh my god! You can love. Let me tell you about Toho. I heard you guys talking about Toho yes, earlier. that was that. <laughs> you you beat my uh, transition into it. I'm Lily. sorry. The question. I cut you off. I apologize. No, it's the the eternal question that I've that I've been asking so many guests since uh, I get since a v- viewer start asking. And I need to know now. They have they have stopped submitting the question, but I am still personally interested in knowing <laughs> each guest. Not what is, but do you have, I think is the beauty of the question, because it, That's good. do you have a favorite Toho character? So the answer to this one yes. is probably yes, but it's hard to choose because there's a lot of really good Tohos. Yes, that is. Uh, it's hard to choose is a question that has two different directions. And one of them is because I don't know what Toho is. And the <laughs> other is because I know too much of what Toho is. I got into Toho like halfway through the boss game development. Okay. And it like made me realize that like, oh, I should have been playing this for years. Right. Like I, I love everything about it. It's got ridiculous anime aesthetic. It's like there's all the characters are great. They're all women. Uh, um I think, I think there was like one guy in there somewhere. There's there's like a dude who owns a shop, I think. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing that somewhere in in the Toho Wiki. <laughs> Um, it's funny. There's a really, there's an article I read ages ago called, uh, Toho and the genderless world. Yeah. And it, it makes this pitch that like, because Toho is all women, that it's, it's essentially a world where like gender is basically irrelevant. And so people just kind of do what they want. Right. Uh, so there's lots of people who are wearing like all these frilly dresses and stuff, but they're also like kind of athletic in a certain way. And there's, you know, it's just very, it's a very interesting, like look at like, I don't know. It's it's good. Yeah, it just it's it's very much like you want to make you know. There is this thing from the outside, like <laughs> I just want to make my all my characters cute little anime girls. Yeah. And then that never changed, but then they keep doing whatever they want. Um, but you're dodging the question here, Lily. <laughs> oh sure. What I, I thought I answered it. I will answer it again. You never answer what your favorite is, or do you, you not said, have one? You t- you asked me if I had a favorite. And oh, the answer is I do have the answer a favorite. Is no, okay. No, and I do have a favorite. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. okay, sorry. My favorite is uh, I can't say her. I don't know Japanese well enough. Moko, Moko, Moko. I think Fujiwara no Moko. She's like a uh, she's basically a regular human who got tricked into drinking an immortality elixir. Okay. And so she's really pissed off that she lives forever. And her and this princess, princess for the moon, are both immortal, and they murder each other every day. See, that's uh, I'm a true fan of Toho. It's just <laughs> everybody <laughs> is like eighty thousand years old and uh, a, a devil vampire, and is pissed off about it. Yeah, they're all they're like kind of upset. Like all the all the main plots of Toho are like someone decided to do something stupid, and like everyone got kind of annoyed about it. And yeah, they just kind of like make puns at each other it's like, like a lot a lot of low stakes conflicts <laughs> it's like low stakes conflicts that are like well let's shoot bullets at each other about right. it right uh um the lowest yeah, stakes for that. like i'm gonna turn the world into internal night or something <laughs> but yeah. everyone is very blase yeah. about it yeah but no, it's, it's very good yeah and also like the whole the whole uh, the fan element is the other part that I think is the very neat element of it. The whole uh, just make make your Toho game if you want to make a Toho game. Yeah, it makes me really happy to see, and it. it, it's so weird and funny and strange that it just evolved in such a way where where like there are hundreds and hundreds of Toho remix albums of the music. Right, like, there's a Toho album in every single genre of music you could imagine. Yeah, you know, yeah. And it's, it's, there's and probably so yeah, there's probably more unofficial Toho games on Steam than there are official Toho games on Steam. Oh but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and there's yeah, just there's like, there's also a Toho game in every genre too. There's right. like, you know, every, yeah, everything. It's great. 
anyone here can make a Toho game. You just like, and it's a. Oh, it's sorry. A, no, no, go ahead. If I'm talking, you just keep talking. I'll. No, stop you're talking. fine. You're fine. Okay. So here's a question for you because yes. I don't know every Indie Apocalypse games. Yeah. Is there and how many are there Toho games in Indie Apocalypse? Zero, but I've thought about what. I've thought about okay. it before. Like, I'm gonna make I, a Toho game for Indie Apocalypse. I was like, <laughs> uh, let's talk during the break. <laughs> No, well, I am kidding. But like, I'm not going to make that promise, but it no, would be very no. Fun. Yes, no, I have. <laughs> I'm, uh, but anyway, speaking of the break, uh, well, we've already come to the end of this segment. Uh, we'll be back in a second, but there you are. I was saying there you are at FUBAR. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, thank you, you know, at the usual. I can't thank you for being in Epox, but I can thank you for making games, of course. Uh, yeah, well, no, I had a very good time. Thank you for well, Thank you for having me on the show. Yes, more people ought to be in that kind of just like, uh, hey, just make the games you want to make space, you know? If you just show up, you'll uh, make games, is what I'm trying to say. Thank you for making games. There we go, found it. <laughs> there uh, you go, I like that. Uh, I'm going to go to a break now, but I will be back in like a, a two minutes and 48 seconds, more or less. Goodbye for now. That was Screaming Females with Normal. Uh, I hope you all are enjoying a exciting Screaming Female summer. Uh, which, Or I guess if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, Screaming Females winter. But uh, anyway, we're back with the show. Both of our guests here, we're in that, that, that cracked open uh, big group area. Hello, everyone. Shao Lagoon Lily, welcome back to the show. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, uh, so, well, I forgot to ask you. I forgot to, I forgot to ask you my unofficial marketing question uh, at the top of your thing. Was how did you hear about Indie Apocalypse? How did I hear? I I think I think I remember seeing it around, like probably on Twitter or something here and there. Yes. But I, I think I really heard about it probably from our own like locally sourced group and yeah. Michael Clamorous, who is a huge, super huge proponent of Indie Apocalypse. Yes, locally um, sourced the zine, one of the bastard children <laughs> of Indie Apocalypse. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it, it, I think that I think that's where it was for sure. Well, uh, I, oh, my friend was in it too. My friend was in the apocalypse. So. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that happens a lot. All that also happens a lot within the indie space. Of my friend was in the apocalypse. Yeah. Oh, which one? Oh, which one was it? Are you at liberty to say who it was? I am at liberty to say. I think she's in the chat earlier. Uh, it's uh, Unity. She made um, weird, oh, yes. unfortunate things. Yes. Which yeah. uh, which itself had a recent Steam release, I believe. It did. I finally got to. I finally like actually sat down and made the time to play it, uh, like last year, and yeah. it was totally excellent. Like I, I, I've I've liked Unity's work for a long time. I'm biased because we're kind of friends and we hang right. out and chat a lot. But like, I um, I like I liked her work because she makes all these like great lesbian RPGs and like women, you know, women folks games and stuff like that. Uh. And then I played Weird and Unfortunate, uh, Things Are Happening, and I remembered that she's just like an incredible RPG designer, too. <laughs> right. That, that's the it's thing. really you, good. <laughs> the thing you forget about like RPGs sometimes is, is like, uh, you can, there's also like a lot of design space you can still play around in in RPGs. Uh, oh, for sure. Especially in I, like I, what we think is like the static turn based uh, Japanese RPG style. I, I, it's funny because I think like RPGs have moved so far away in, for the most part from turn-based RPGs. Like you know, most RPG like Final Fantasy has not made a turn-based game right? In, like, yes, <laughs> a while. And I I think like especially obviously like within the indie scene where people do weird crap all the time. Like I think there's so much room to go back to turn-based stuff and do weird fun stuff with it. And yeah, I hope more people do that because I I always love that stuff. Yeah, I I'm a I'm a turn-based junkie. I love I love them. I love <laughs> After I played that new Final Fantasy, I went back and played the old Final Fantasy. Oh, really? Yeah, I played Like in, FF7? Yes, I played both FF7s kind of like back to back cuz I was like, well, let me go back and play this old one and see what it's like and I'm I think Pretty it's good. it's still rule honestly. 
I'm going to say in 2023, Final Fantasy VII rules. <laughs> Final, Final, Final Fantasy VII? Pretty, pretty good game, I've heard. Yeah, it's it's such a, 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 a fascinating clump of literally every idea they had. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, it's, man. It's cool, and it's, it's charming in a lot of unexpected ways, too. For sure. But anyway. Yeah, but... but... With, yes. with the Final Fantasy uh, series, uh, there's so many amazing monsters and uh, and like moves that they put into them. There's that one on uh, PS4 and uh, various other platforms. I can't remember which one it was, but it's not the MMO one. Yeah. Um, and th- th- there was this uh, there's this ginormous um, like mountain turtle boss. Yes. Which uh, which you can one shot, which, which is like the craziest thing. It, it's possible to one shot it, or like it takes about ten hours, which is crazy. It, you know, it's like raid sort of level. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a classic. That design is in. If I'm thinking of the thing I'm thinking of, that design is in like Final Fantasy VII. You know, <laughs> like it's weird oh, how like many iconic designs that like one series can have. Uh, like it's very like. I, I guess also when you look at people like uh, Yoshitaka Amino and like Akira Ishii, it's like, oh, these are very good illustrators. <laughs> uh, oh, God, yeah. uh, no surprise that they made iconic design. You, know, you know what? Even Nomura, man. Nomura it makes cool looking stuff. Whatever. Nomura, Nomura has a style. And yeah. Nomura is like, it's one of those things where like everyone made fun of Nomura for a long time. And like maybe rightfully so because yeah. the belts are very funny. But like... At the same time, it's very. I hope. I hope. I'd like to think that Nomura is having a great time, just drawing whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> so, I. Listen, it's I, cool. I'm turning it's around to cool. a Nomura defender, as a <laughs> as a Nomura hater earlier on in life. I'm like, yes, give me a belt yeah. of dresses. <laughs> yeah, like, like the thing. The thing I think I've I've learned to or appreciate way, about indie games yeah. in general is like. Or indie games, or, or just stuff in general. It's like it is very fun to see creators who like clearly like a certain thing and yeah. just embrace it and like full throatedly like put it wherever they can. Like just really think it's the coolest thing ever because like that passion really shines through sometimes. Yeah. Uh, even if it's oh, for exactly. belts. <laughs> and and like it really like you can, I I love an identifiable style like more than anything oh god just like looking at your page of like uh you know guest illustrations like these are it's like a giant mountain of identifiable styles you know <laughs> oh yeah for sure i uh i i was really excited to to for all those because like yeah they all have such like such specific styles that they do so well and like i i was happy to write them situations where like okay here's something that's gonna be like it is a home run for you as far as like the stuff that I know you like to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. Uh, yeah. There is like, it's, it's why I kind of, it's, it's, it's so weird when you start to see like indie house styles kind of emerge. Uh, yeah, sure. Even like among people who are like, you know, people who like there's, I can't describe, but there are like definitely like pixel styles that look very similar to each other. And I don't sure. know. And I don't know why they like, but it's it's weird because they also don't look like uh, retro, quote unquote. I'm just gonna call them old. I hate calling. I should call them old games. They're not, old you know, games. retro is a very weird phrase that games uses. But like, yeah. they don't look like you know uh, that 16 and 8 bit era. They're, but they're like they're like a new uh, era of like pixel design stuff. I wonder if there's a name for it because I, I don't know what people call it but like there's it's the kind of style that was if um shoot what's the first game by heart stop heart machine um hyper light drifter hyper light drifter yeah like hyper light drifter style where that's there's no outlines on anything it's just yeah. like bold different colors of it's like lots of flat colors not that much shading and lots of like and nothing has outlines yes like, that style was so popular and i think still is right yeah that, that remi- yes that was the style one of the styles i was thinking of because that uses that um a lot of games do use that style too yeah for sure and yeah so- i think i think it's like an indie style that that pick, got picked up and got popular like around i don't know mid mid 2010s i think yeah 
Um, and which is always why I like to see like uh, just kind of like people bringing out whatever their own style is. Uh, you know there, and like it's like oh yeah, it's it's very cool when like it, and this is not unique to games, of course. You know, <laughs> plenty of uh illustrators and other artists like you, you know uh kind of like you see a style that pops up you know mm-hmm. and like, yeah for like, sure so I'm yeah not... i think the the collectives are like really fantastic at that like sock pop has such a in, incredible style for example <laughs> also like lots of the devolver games as well my goodness but like you know the, the graphic design sense is just phenomenal yeah, that's that's also yeah. the the curse part of it is because like Devolver doesn't make games. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> but but yeah. but it, they they because they uh, kind of hone a certain style it kind of pushes people towards a certain style because they're like I want Devolver to publish my game so I have to make it look like <laughs> cactus games. Okay, okay so this <laughs> It's it's that's that's funny because like it reminds me so much of, and I wonder how many people have done this, but how many people have added petable dogs in their games? Yeah. Oh yeah. Probably. <laughs> probably like literally every game. <laughs> <laughs> like, I it's one of those things where I I want to never do it out of spite now, which yes. is very silly. But I thought about asking. I thought about making. I might have even asked the person who made the the bundle launcher as a joke. I'm like, how hard would it be to add a petable dog to the bundle launcher, <laughs> to like the bundle <laughs> menu? Amazing. Yeah. And but it's like, and it, and it's funny because I thought so. I thought they were like, if you add them just for do it, we won't quote it. Like there's some kind of sanctity to your to your stupid gimmick account. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, people people just I mean it's free free press, right? Free right. attention or whatever. It, so. It's it's very strange when it's when like these things become like industries in and of themselves. Uh yeah. yeah I think with 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 that stuff as well, it is it's super fun when you see that like bleeding into other things, like ooblets, having like the ooblets be pets for and like there, there's some games where you have like really random creatures like bears and stuff, which yeah. uh, which they have like pet functionality to which which is just hilarious. Right, it's it's like it feels like in, it doesn't exist in your heart, and then it, it's it's that's it is what activates my cynicism gene, you know. I'm like, absolutely. You know, it's yeah. like if the like oh, if you're thinking like this, like how sincere is the rest of your work, really, and how much is it like we made a farming game, but because wholesome is in, in vogue, we made it we made our color palette pastels, you know. Yeah. Why didn't you put more belt on things? Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> the stuff I, you want to do. <laughs> I, I, I remember <laughs> someone, I think it was of Uvla specifically, they're like, uh, we made our dance battles, they're just like Pokemon battles. I'm like, so you're, you're basically not changing, you're just like putting a different coat of paint on games that already exist. Uh, and just yeah. like, uh, it's non-violent because they technically don't hit each other, I guess, but it's still the same mechanics, <laughs> functionally. And it's like, at what point are you actually divorcing these things from the ideas? You know, uh, like is it's, is is yeah. what's separating Pokemon from animal fighting and wholesomeness just the name of the attacks? Mm. Yeah, I think I, with with art and stuff, that's really interesting. Like, because like to 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 a degree, like everything is a remix of yeah. something else. It's, it's kind of pulling together all of, like, the influences that you have within your life and sphere and, like, distilling it into, like, your own unique sort of thing. But, yeah, but, but there are definitely some where it's, like, it's, like, hmm, <laughs> this is very suspiciously similar. <laughs> right, where, where it doesn't feel like In it passed through, way. it doesn't feel like it passed through that funnel of yourself. Instead, it just went straight from uh, other influences to the canvas, so to speak. Oh, totally. It, it's 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 dead tempting to uh, to do that sort of thing though, because there's sometimes where you play a game, and like whilst playing it, you're like, this is a really interesting mechanic. Like, could this be used in like a different setting? Yeah. So, for example, like Kirby mechanics, you could put that to like, yeah, you know, like a dark aesthetic or something. I and then I... something quite disturbing <laughs> off the back of that, or like just awesome stuff like that, you know. <laughs> I have an unfinished uh, project file that's been sitting around for far too for like years that pre-exists indie apocalypse that has curry mechanics but it's a bullet hell 
Oh, amazing. That sounds so interesting. What? So is it like Ethan, the characters, and then like, uh, yeah. he swaps out like, the shooting style? Yes, it's, it's, <laughs> that, it's that, but you would get like your different spell, like your different shot styles. I, I have like 20 different shot styles made. And it is oh, amazing. All, it's all based on like how you, uh, like which enemies, like if do I want to have like a weird arcing shot? Or do I want to have a spread shot or this back and forth shot or whatever? Uh, yeah, it was taking this kind of like the the, the huge variety of attack uh, patterns available in Kirby and being like, what if it was a vertical shooter? Or oh, I think so it might have been. A, yeah. I think it might have been a with, horizontal with, shooter, but amazing. It, with, with with like bullet hells and like shooting ones, like it's it's quite interesting because like there, there's only so many ways you can shoot a gun, but like. People like remakes out so much and like add like different elements, but it stays fresh and fun for like a lot of projects. There was a there was one that I saw being made. Um, it was like this spell casting sort of game, but you could like um, they they'd created it in such a way where you could like piece together bits of different spells, and then it would like change the the shooting style of your character based on that, which which seems super fun. Yeah, like <laughs> I love that. You say that there's only so many shooting styles, but you have to expand your brain into what a shooting style can be, you know? Oh, it's easy, it's easy. Right. <laughs> they're just They're ultimately just projectiles crossing a screen, uh, and anything you can do. I, ha- I had so many weird, like, uh, uh, like split beams that split once they hit something, and uh, uh, what's it called? Like all sorts of like weird boomeranging effects. You can just kind of do all sorts of. I'm thinking about games now. I'm like I should. What if I made video games again? <laughs> made a game. <laughs> you should make a game. Everyone should make a game. I should. Oh, but, definitely. Uh, <laughs> where do, Where does one get the time to do that? A hundred percent. The eternal question. <laughs> right. If, 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 that's probably by and large why most of my games play like reading a book. <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> it's having the time to make it interesting, but it's like, oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Listen, uh, reading a book is a valid form of video game. I, I let, me, <laughs> let me tell you about the, uh, you know, Ume Neko, or <laughs> oh, which yeah, is that's right. you know, uh, uh, one of those things that like, see, when you go in the indie space, you get a lot of like, you fall into these kind of different. Uh, it's like a whole different world of games and it's fun because <laughs> you, you get like, I have like, you know, those legacy game dev people where it's like, I'm posting about summer game fest or whatever. And then the other side is like Higurashi posting. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> huh? What if I spent 80,000 hours playing these games and maybe eventually, <laughs> I mean, this show did get me to play Toho eventually, so it'll it'll it it'll, worked out. It'll dig itself into my soul eventually, but I need to. It was it was all worth it if I got you to make got you to play Toho. Yeah, so. I, I I have I I even played uh, that first. I even played the first Toho. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh God, what's it? Prayers of something or other. Oh yeah, I forget what it's called. They all have great names. Yeah, like I'm, I'm genuinely jealous of how good all the Toho names are. Uh, Toho one. Like all of them high responsive, to, high, highly responsive to prayers. Highly responsive to prayers. It's like oh, such amazing. a ridiculous name that it's, it's just incredibly good. Yeah, uh, I've got to like. It is, that is also like a culture I am chasing. Uh, having talked to some people who like are more who you know are sometimes you know in Japan. Um, yeah. Like talking sure. to a, a guest of the show and Zine participant NPC Casey about like Dojin games and how like it's a different culture than you like U.S. indie is closer to like Zine culture in some ways. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it, that's such an interesting thing because. I only, again, I know of it very, very tangentially because right. of stuff not, like Toho. And not but, living in like, Japan. <laughs> and not, yeah, not living in Japan, having never been in Japan, and having, like you like I, like I like you kind of mentioned, like having talked to people who are indies in, in Japan or doujins in Japan. And like, I yeah, so I can't speak to the culture, but all I can tell is that the vibes seem very slightly different. Yeah. Uh, because like, I think like the, the quote unquote like, 
proper indie scene like never didn't boom in quite the same way that it did here in like 2008 right. or whatever but like right. zune's been around forever making toes since like right. 2000 or something so yeah there's just... definitely always been stuff right but it's not like the, i feel maybe there isn't like the same amount of money there is in like you know it feels you know i that you'll see true. job postings for indie studios and the people are hiring people who make more money than i make <laughs> and they oh god yeah and like you have money to hire someone with a higher salary than I I make, you clearly you know have too much money. It's the thing that's kind of blowing my mind nowadays. And I mean, this is really like like you kind of mentioned. Like, there's more money in indie games now than ever. But like, I see so many independent games on like Steam and stuff that have fully animated like anime trailers. Yeah. And I'm like, you, I know how I know enough about animation to know how much that that stuff costs, right? Yeah. Like, oh. how did you afford that? <laughs> like, and... I've never been able to afford an anime trailer for. I will never be able to, you know. Maybe I will. That'd be cool. But yeah, it's it's like I think a lot about that article that that Finji interview where they're like, now you nowadays you can't make a game for under four million dollars, and I'm like, oh, God. I'm like that's <laughs> not true. You... <laughs> yeah. That's... No, it's it. Yeah. But the, I think that mentality kind of like spreads to like. Uh, this idea of like what indie means sure oh definitely definitely with those sort of projects as well like you know it depends like how much of the budget's been like gobbled up by like you know just like general management and uh you know like project creep and stuff right um, sure. <laughs> and that's yeah, it, it's there's there was that moment and you know where people were talking about like different sub genres and stuff like things like alt games and yeah and, whatever and it's like because you know like you like the the indie the word indie is very broad nowadays basically which i don't think is a mind-blowing uh no that <laughs> like that, that, that exists in it, every but, other media yeah. as well yeah yeah for sure uh you know uh, the, the classic of like why does this indie music why does this indie musician's parents have uh blue wicked blue names on wikipedia yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah exactly like you know you you were able to hire a a professional anime studio to create a trailer for your game right that is you know technically an indie game like you know is is hey is super giant game still indie like i, I think you know it, it doesn't matter what the answer right. is right but, and but... super giant's a perfect i love super giant as an example because like yeah they even from the get-go they were already like the 80s like 80 miles ahead of like a like a bedroom independent bedroom dev you know yeah yeah they they had like sponsorships from warner brothers and stuff like that right and, right. Like, and they were yeah. they're all xea guys you know right. I, i'm surprised how many people don't know that like their like story guy used to be the editor-in-chief at GameSpot. <laughs> I did not know that actually. Yeah, and I, it's like, I knew they all worked at the company together when they first got started. I think. Yeah, so it's like yeah. that. That already me- knows means they probably know ninety uh, percent of game press. You know. Yeah, for sure. Mm. And like, so it's like, and this is I, I say to someone who loves super giant games, you know. Oh <laughs> this, yeah, for sure. They're just a perfect example of like uh, uh, the scope uh, concept creep for what indie means. Yeah, I, I mean, like, the fact that you're going to put, I don't know, Hades in the same group as, like, he fucked the girl out of me, right? It's like... Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's two, two, two very different kinds of indie, but technically neither of them is AAA. I mean, it's yeah. Supergiant is probably what people would call, like, AA at this point, because it's, like, right. 30 people, and they have millions of dollars, so... Right, right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... If you, if you have... I. I, in my, my I use the term occasionally budgeted. Uh, like if you if you have a budget, um, you're on a different level, basically. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. Oh, uh, definitely. My budget yeah. is my bank account. <laughs> They're yeah. the same. One of the same. Yep. That's true. Yeah, my budget is whatever I'm able to <laughs> save from like work. <laughs> uh, and I, I think uh, so. If you have like a separate company budget. That is a, like a different a scale of indie, independent development, but like it's in, that's why that's why I like the term dojin because it's not like a I use alternative a lot, but sure I think it kind of implies genre in some extent. 
but mm. I, I like yeah, the, I think I think that's true. I like the idea of like because Dojin kind of kind of feels like it implies it's more like the, uh, hobbyist, but without the the negative connotation it carries in English. I think. Sure. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, I think people use uh, hobby dev derisively to some extent. Oh, definitely. Yeah, like, yeah. You're not, you're not used or something. Yeah, I think uh, you know the term hobbyist can be damaging as well because, like, you, you know, you, you get some people see them at and uh, use them at as like a basis to charge people like less for like commissions and stuff, and just completely lowball them. Right. Because <laughs> like, oh, yeah, sure. you know, this must be enjoyable for you, and it's like designing your logo isn't that enjoyable. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It, it's it's this weird association too between like money and worth and value too where like if you're a hobbyist right you're not doing it you're not putting your whole your whole ass into it and and right doing it as your full-time job or whatever which means like you don't really care about it which means like do i even want to pay money for your games and if your games are cheap then like they're probably not good whereas like if i charge 10 bucks for something does that make it better automatically like, right right that sort of stuff <laughs> I mean, I, I, I admit that I'm playing into that some of that mentality of, like, trying to convince people, like, oh, no, like, what if you do? I'm trying to normalize people paying for, like, 30-second games, you know? Sure. Oh, definitely, definitely. Because I it, think... It's, it's, it's tricky I... with charging, isn't it? Like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, once money gets involved. But, like, I... That's... I mean, I, I like Indie Apocalypse, and the reason I, I like Indie Apocalypse is, like, I... I do think we're at a point where like lots of people want to make games, you know, we live in whatever the 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 shroud under the shroud of capitalism, right? So yeah. people are trying to find ways to pay their bills oh, and like definitely. if people are able to make games and like, you know, I I think uh it was Zolivier Nelson Jr. said that said, called it the called it pizza money and like if you're able to get if you're able to make some games and get some pizza money and like things are, you know, you get you can pay off a bill or something, then like that's pretty cool because the reality is that we still have to do those things. Right. Right. You know, we all have rent and oh, crap definitely. like that, but like, you know, I, I, I like, I want, I want to explore different ways for, for game creators, you know, not just double a or whatever, not just, not just popular people, <laughs> not just yes, really, right. really big, super polished game games to, to at least be able to pay a little bit to, like, yeah. to make a little bit off the work that they do because unfortunately money is very oh, important. Definitely. Right, yeah, it's great that you mentioned because he fucked the girl. I mean, he's your perfect example of art game that makes no money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like people, people love that game. I've yeah. seen so many people get excited over that game. It's, it's and been like, at like uh, featured at like like almost eight festivals or whatever around the world. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. No, but you know, it doesn't oh, and it probably and it probably shook a lot of people's. And the the thing is, unfortunately, like I, I wonder how much of the reality is that a lot of people just don't have tons of money. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, like a lot of people mm. who play, he fucked the girl out of me might, might, might pay five bucks for it or 10 bucks for it. But like, you know, a lot of people probably also got it relatively cheap or whatever, or I don't, I don't actually know if it's it, just paid up for free. It's free. It's, it's free in play. browser, I yeah. believe. Cause it's, it's, okay. it's, cause you can play, I think GB studio export to browser. So. Oh, okay. But like, but that's the thing. It's like, you know so unfortunately this game that has probably you know been very meaningful to people i have not played it because <laughs> i i have yet to to i have to be in a certain mentality to play a game that i know is going to mess with me yes uh, no i but... i I'm, I'm a i'm a i'm a freak who loves high intensity art so i'm yeah i'm like I, I, oh yeah <laughs> I get into a mood like that like once every three months, and yeah. I'm like, I need to play something that's really gonna screw me up. Yeah, uh, and I, then I then I go to town. But I live in that mood. <laughs> but um, but it but it's it's something that I know. Like just hearing people talk about it is super meaningful yeah. to people, and and you would hope that something you know you're like, well, I you know what that's not even the point because I think the point is that everyone should be able to pay their bills. Right. And, yes. Like, that... Not worry about Apple. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and that's the trick. But it's, also, Taylor could be able to too. So it's like I wish everyone could like. Uh, similarly, like I'm like, I think even before I started it, when I was just like pitching the concept of any podcast round to local people, I was like, this isn't gonna make anyone rich, but like if it'll help yeah. people pay rent, that's good enough. Yeah, for sure. 
yeah like, pizza you, definitely help people or, help people get some good right get some takeout or even like if someone if 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 i mean if someone just gave me money for like if someone just gave me like 60 bucks for something i already did that's good for me yeah oh, oh, that's, that's a, a nice little thing yeah and that's like hey that's food for a week you know uh mm. then that's kind of like yeah, I think- and it's something it's something but also it's because i think uh game dev is too focused on like one singular opportunity you know like oh definitely yeah yeah like it's, you have it's, you, sorry no it's fine it's it's a very winners focused right situation right mm. like, like mm. we we have people who make it huge and they they do really really well and there are people in the in the middle who who you know get by and and make a game every few years and it does well enough that they probably make another one but like there's a lot of very big quote unquote winners that we pay a lot of attention to and right. there's a lot of people who just make small things and or make one game and then never get to again right oh uh, right. definitely yeah there's there's that romanticized idea isn't there where like you know it's like what one person or like a small group of people working for like years on like one like super polished, super like handcrafted like masterpiece like Stardew Valley or something. But like you know, like for for most people, like even even if they spend that time and like hard graft, like crafting it, like most of the time it's gonna struggle to like get anywhere near that amount of success. Right, and even then, it's kind of like very mm. lucky because like. Listen, oh, as, someone, as someone who beats Stardew Valley, it's just Harvest Moon. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just it's good, but <laughs> it's good, but it's just yeah. Harvest Moon. I I wonder. I I mean, I have to imagine a lot of it is just like, oh, there's there's a generation of people who never played Harvest Moon, right? Right, so, right. Mm, and also, yeah. and that's cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I used to hang out at a friend's house, and when we were sitting around, I would load up a virtual console and just play Harvest Moon while everyone else was hanging around. I was like, I'm just gonna fire up Harvest Moon, <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and run around. Yeah, it's like, yeah, and 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 you know, there's also that publisher problem where like a, a team will spend forever on a game and it'll be semi successful, but like you know, people will be like, wow, I love that new Annapurna game or that new Devolver game. Yep. Mm. and it's like yeah. they did make that you know <laughs> but like uh, like the way publishers kind of eat up the identity of games and studios to some extent uh, yeah oh definitely uh, yeah I, I i i think that's like one of like the main like reasons why it's so interesting where there's like uh the emergence of like small collectives and stuff where it's kind of taken that role of the publisher but just doing it all kind of in-house and between yeah the group which yeah. is fascinating i yeah. i remember looking at i forget who i was talking i was talking with someone about like bad crediting in games uh oh, oh, and this yeah, kind of publisher stuff and i was looking i looked at the game awards and the only the only actual human beings that are credited are the actors and musicians which i wonder uh yeah uh, yeah wonder why that <laughs> yeah i wonder if that is that is some guild union stuff going on there uh but everyone else yeah. who won awards is like from software <laughs> yeah for sure Ooh. it's it's like, like there is like you know we who kn- like who knows can anyone tell you a level designer in the same way they could tell you their favorite di- you know director of photography you know mm. sure yeah i mean it used to be that like you know there is like a tourism obviously yeah which is its own up and down issue but like yeah it, it is tricky in a way that like I don't know. I, I do think the collective idea is very cool. There's there's quite a bit of that in um I, because my like I said my girlfriend sells comics and there's quite a few like zine collectives and like comic oh. collectives in the same way where it's like three or four friends who live together or something who all make who all have like similar vibes of work or like sort of tangentially related stuff will just be like yeah we have like this name and we all sell stuff and it like helps us push forward a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I. Oh. There were times where I knew so. I mean, there is that the more that more organized like comics cooperative that came out fairly recently. Uh, but I remember like I have books from like Pizza Island or whatever, which was <laughs> like this New York studio. Uh, but yeah, there was like you know just like studio spaces of people who like table at shows together and publish together and like. 
yeah. Of, oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, it, there's 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 definitely like a massive strength in like having that community and like group support because like you know in 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 time like tough times and stuff you can fall back on others and like really just like explore ways in which people have managed to get their work out there and just having that insight on like what methods worked for other people but like you know on like a more local scale can be like infinitely helpful yeah and like uh i think it's important i mean uh, i'm obviously biased in this but i think it's important to support other people's work you know uh to, to know real benefit of your own uh, yeah, or, yeah. or like yeah. to have like and also it's like it's that kind of like a uh, uh, collective power where it's like maybe uh, one individual unknown comic artist wouldn't be able to get a table but like uh you know a comics collective might be able to get a table at an event oh definitely yeah i with, with those as well like it opens a lot of doors like yeah with with those sort of ones where it like might be 50 pound or something uh, to purchase the table or slot, yeah. just being able to chip in like a fiver and then rep- representing like a whole group of people can, right. you know, like is is, is 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 a lot stronger than going at it fully solo. Um, yeah, because there's a lot more barriers to entry, and yeah, you know, especially financial. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've went, I've been to TCAF a couple times, and uh, oh, uh, there's a this is all pre, the pre pan, you know, uh, yeah. Hmm. I'm I'm hoping for one one year for that game section to come back so I can go. Uh, I say pre pan as if we're not living uh, with just a brand new yeah. disease that we have. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, folks. You know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think you're, I think you're good. Oh, definitely. Yeah, uh, past the point where we where we're collectively thinking that we can get rid of it instead of just accepting, well, we got a new flu or whatever. I mean, there's still pre pan and post pan, and like yeah. there was a world that existed where there was not as much covid and now yeah. there's a world with a lot of covid yeah and mm. just uh what what people are just what some people are ex- uh considering a livable amount of covid yeah oh definitely which yeah. is still like not you know not an ideal you, it's never an ideal amount you know yeah but oh, whatever definitely. the point the, the point is uh that uh when i would go there there was a group there that was like boston comics roundtable uh, and it was like oh. a couple of people would bring like a bunch of uh, comics from that Boston Comics Roundtable, like a group of comic people in the Boston area. And it was, and that's oh. the other kind of like benefit of uh, kind of like oh well, sometimes only a couple of people can go, can go to the event, but because we can't all afford to go to Toronto or whatever. Oh, so, right. I mean, that's uh, I mean that that's what I tell people sometimes when I go to uh, like that's why I have my. Um, What's it called? Uh, uh, my consignment shop, which is kind of mm. like I, I tell people, hey, all these people around the world can't travel to sell games, but I can sell games in Providence, Rhode Island, where they can't where they can't travel there. Oh, and that's it, really cool. Yeah, it's, oh. it, I still haven't figured out how to get people to buy them, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the hard ones, man. That's the no, that was with creative um, stuff. That's just like an issue around the boards. Like I've I've had art shows where like you know you, you go in and you're so hopeful, and then it's just like dead. And it's like no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like people like look, walk past me like oh that looks really interesting. It's like please buy at least a pin. <laughs> and it's like run off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's it's it's both the mo- the better part and the more crushing part about physical events is that you can see the people looking at your thing and then leaving. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it, it it takes a lot of resilience. Like the the first art show that I did was <laughs> I I I don't think I was prepared for that element. So like yeah. I, I I took it quite bad. I was, I was like, oh, this hurts, yeah. you know. <laughs> right. You think you just go there and sell your stuff and leave. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, you know, you cast it up and you're like, well, if, if if I sell, like, 30 things and then, like, you'll sell, like, four and it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it could just be a, broad, <laughs> a problem with my stuff. No, I think that's, that's a... That's a... <laughs> yeah, I think art is just really hard. <laughs> it's the thing. 
Oh, definitely. I, I, I think then games, you add, like, this extra element where it's kind of, like, slightly intangible. Like, you know, yeah. like, it's easier to sell, like, a print or a pin because you can be like, this is literally a, this is literally what you're going to get. Instead of selling the idea of a game that they're going to have to take home, put in, boot up, might enjoy, might not. It's just a different ball game, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it, it's very funny going to comics shows after so like i i have a there's a local anime games convention that's pretty big in the midwest and like i i've been taking boss game there for a couple of years oh and which which show is that this is yomakan okay so it's it's in downtown detroit and yeah. it's like 20 25 thousand people it's pretty it's huge it's right. it's really big because I've, I've been and to, our... i've been to momocon oh. once not momocon uh, uh ohio con which is also sort of midwest dish I, I keep meaning to check out ohio con it's but... free it's so free is it? Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. No, I am. Um, so I so I've, I've had this booth at Yomacon, and like, boss game usually gets a lot of traffic. Um, I drag my friend along, who's like very boisterous and yeah. is a good barker to like pull oh. people in. And I put up all these graphics and stuff like that. People seem to like it. There's like chiptune music. People people dig that stuff. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so I'll get I'll get tons and tons of like traffic at my table. People will play it, and like the response is usually universally like pretty excited. Like people yeah. are you know into you. You know, it's it's an action game. It's pretty easy to get into and have a good time. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really really cool. And it's it's always you know it's a super good feeling, obviously, to see people like tell you your work is great, and then like none of them buy. Oh, <laughs> right. Like I think last time after after I did Yomacon, I had like fifteen more sales over the course of a four day weekend than oh, I would man. have had normally. It's like I sometimes like boss game was getting like a few sales a day. Or like one or two sales a day, mm, and right. like I it went up like three or four for a couple of days. And now, like, okay, you, cool. you sell it at the all. event too? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have a physical copy, right? Right, so right. I'll just be like, hey, you can go to this, you can go to this website and buy it like right now on your phone. <laughs> like you can do it in front of me if you want to, and I would love you to. And some people, some people did like three or four people were like, yeah, I'm gonna buy this right now. Um, but I think oh, I think it might have been like twenty, right? Like I sold like twenty. Right. Co- like these are like tons and tons of people are coming through and getting excited oh. about it, and like, you know. But like comparing that to comic shows, and I think people just like to take home physical stuff. Like yes. people who come to comic shows are like, I'm here to collect stuff. Like I'm here yeah, at a comic show, and, and maybe it's because it's a comic show too, and not like a games show. We're like, yeah, or not like an anime thing, right? So like, if you go to an mm. anime con, you're there to buy like merch of your wife or whatever, right? Um, <laughs> and like, it, the, no, more power to you. Cause that's the point. But like, you go to a comics show and you're like, I am a nerd. I'm I'm here for like these alternative super queer comics, and I'm gonna walk home with like armfuls of them. Oh, but definitely. you're probably not gonna. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, oh, with, with with those shows as well, it's 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 quite fun when like all the creators are like buying from each other, like you know, oh, they're, yeah. they're, they're <laughs> a handful of sales from a public, and then that money is just passed around like the whole floor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Every every one of these shows buys stuff from each other, right? They're all like, oh yeah, I have like my three or four friends that I always buy from whenever they have a new right. comic, like. Uh, that, but I, I think I think the physical thing is a huge part of it. Right, mm. and it's definitely it's, it's like a different cultural thing too. Like there are Absolutely. people who are like into you know indie comics uh, and want to buy handmade mm. this kind of handmade stuff where it's like there's there's not really as much like indie shows that uh, for games especially that trade in that kind of like that style of indie. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, and I I think I, I wonder for a few reasons. I wonder if it's just because like indie the like, games are harder to make. Right. They're not quite as hard anymore, but like you know where there's less people just like making a small community and everyone's buying each other's games or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I don't there's know. like uh, there's less of a established audience for that kind of like uh, aesthetically indie sort of stuff. Um, yeah. In the way that we think of like uh, like comics are just a good example because like it's it's very easy to tell an indie comics from a marvel comic you know sure mm. i i wonder if there's something about the the level of commitment that a game feels like or like cause I, I feel like this is a oh, thing definitely. for me sometimes where yeah. you know like I'll, I'll have a bunch of games but like the act of booting it up is there's more friction there than the act of me literally just like picking up a zine and reading it 
Yes, yeah. Uh, I have is. friction about all these things nowadays, but I feel like games have a friction to them where I'm like, I'm I'm too lazy to start something new. I'm like exhausted. I don't want to boot up something. I'll just like, you know, play whatever game I always play. Yeah, there was, um, I there's something I've uh, speaking of things I've mentioned before. There was uh, when I've been at different like uh, like punk flea markets and just things like that. Uh, the thing that turned people off as like as to why they're not gamers is it's like a time commitment. They really think games are like a lifestyle sort of thing. Yeah. So there is that mentality like, oh, I don't want to get into game because I don't want to have to commit forty hours to one thing or something. For sure. Uh, yeah, it, it, and games have like you know theoretically have like a learning curve to them, where like you know if you know how to read, then you right. can read a comic, right? Like, right. Maybe you won't understand it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, but you'll have a good time probably. Like yeah. you'll see the pictures and and I don't know. Yeah, there's. Whereas the... like a game, like it, you might you might open a game and it turns out it's really hard and confusing, and you're like, ah, oh, never mind, this sucks. Yeah, that's, like... that's it's just a very <laughs> hard weird thing about like uh, games where the diffi- where there's those double layers of difficulty of like the difficulty of like playing it, then the difficulty of understanding it, whereas like books and movies and like you can turn on a movie and watch it all the way through uh, and it'll finish whether you understood a thing about it or not yeah absolutely whereas like you know they're not stopping in the middle of a movie that says and they're like are you understanding the themes that are being portrayed to you right now (laughs) and you can't continue until you understand them yeah yeah, it's tricky. So, so I think I think there's a lot of things that yeah. that make. I mean, you know, in the end, like games are a different medium, and so right, it got it got tricky challenges that don't quite translate to comics or music or whatever else. But but they're a medium that more people are growing up with. So I think it's getting like it's getting closer to just like that that kind of barrier diminishing a little bit. Uh, I hope so. I hope oh, definitely. So. But you know what does help? This little guy, if you're watching the stream, you're seeing floating and hovering in the bottom left is that these tapes <laughs> helped a lot uh, to sell this, actually, to convince people. Really? Yeah. Uh, that's, the, that's the physical thing. People like it. Yeah. It looks the, really cool. Yes, I, I'm holding one right now. Yeah, they, awesome. I'm pointing at a camera that's not plugged in. Uh, <laughs> they do look uh, very cool, and it does like really draw people's attention more than like – I used to have like postcards with codes on the back, uh, sure, because that was a super cheap way to sell games physically. Mm. But, that makes but, sense. But since then, I've also got these. I like. I need to find a better way to sell them, and people don't have optical drives anymore. Uh, mm. So Wait, I can't, like for for USBs for burning them on DVDs. Oh yeah yeah yeah. No oh, one's yeah. got those. Unfortunately. Then I saw that people put Game Boy games inside of cassette cases now. Uh, oh, nice! Oh, really? Yeah, and and so there's actually like you know the Cover Project, which is like a site where people make game covers, uh, actually has a lot of Game Boy games. So there's like in that format for what you know Game Boy games look like inside of cassette cases. So it's easy for me to take like Bugs Bunny and Crazy Castle and <laughs> use it as the basis for. This cassette case, uh, but yeah, it's and I, I encourage, highly encourage all game developers, uh, indie game devs to go to go to events and just like take that idea. Cassette cases are super cheap. Uh, printing the covers is super cheap. Uh, AliExpress USB sticks are super cheap. They just take a couple weeks to get to there. Yeah, I was I was curious because I, I if I had to guess like the the. USB stick would be the most expensive part of this, and it I don't is. know how much that like. Um, how much is. does one of these cost? Can you tell me legally how much? Yes, how I can, much uh, I am. I love to be wide open about how much <laughs> things cost. Like my, at the end of the year, I just kind of splay out how much money I spend on indie apocalypse each year. Sure. <laughs> and how much money it brings in. Like I, very, I like to be very transparent about money uh, with Whoa. regards to this project because I think it's important. I, I think kind of related sure. to that you know the stuff we're talking about the double a people don't talk enough about how much money games cost yeah so i think we that's what skews the impression if you like if you knew you know uh half of the games in like whatever next game fest or wholesome games had a budget of like 
five hundred thousand to two million dollars, you'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, hold up now. Oh, wait, wait, what? Yeah, it's, it's not absolutely. like it's not transparent in the same way that like film budgets are transparent. Usually, I don't know why they're transparent, mm. <laughs> but they are. Unions, probably. I'm gonna say it's unions again. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I don't know why either. I just <laughs> thought I, I just said it as I was saying it. I was like, wait, why are film budgets transparent? <laughs> Yeah. No, I think yeah, being I think... transparent about money is very good. Mm. With, with with games as well, there's that massive perception that, like, you release a game and then you're just balling. Like, there's just, like, a massive influx of money. Like, right. I've, I've, oh, I've, yeah, I think that's sure. one of the things that makes, like, gamers, like, quite a tricky audience. Like, but, but there's a lot more, like, general negativity, I think, for, like, casual gamers. Uh, you, know, you know, people in that sort of stuff is just like the audience, then then a lot of other mediums. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, compared to like books and comics and stuff, there's some projects that you release that are very like heartfelt and they just get eaten alive. Like like into like the YouTube comments on like um, you know playthroughs and stuff. It's like oh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's definitely one to avoid for your sanity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And even like terms of like or anything anything mildly mildly abstract that you see on YouTube, it's very much like mm. what were they smoking do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh for sure. <laughs> and yeah. not even like and this is like very very safe safe <laughs> like not even like actually ch- visually challenging anything. It's just like mildly psychedelic or whatever. Yeah. If that, no, of course, but it's 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 such an interesting style as well, like implementing styles that are like you know almost eyeball melting, like just like pixely glorious goodness, like <laughs> yeah, it's like an amazing style to like play around with, but it does so often get written off as ah, oh, you know, <laughs> this person must have been off their tits, and it's like no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh it, it's just kind. Of... <laughs> Uh, I think that's. I think part of it is this uh, difficulty of uh, the general public uh, yeah. uh, uh, dealing with kind of abstract visuals, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, but, I wonder how much how much of that is just like this. We have to like the slowly escaping the concept of what like video games are, right? right? Or like for yeah. video games are a thing where you run around and shoot people, or you like jump and you fight and you do stuff, and it's like. That is true. That's that's a huge part of video games and was like most of video games for a huge majority of video game history. But like that was also 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like weird, weird indie games have been coming out for over 20 years. And like they've all there's always been like weird, unsettling, ununderstandable, like abstract nonsense. And oh. it's been great for, you know, I don't know when Yumi Nikki came out, but that was however many decades ago now. Right, right. And I, st- I still don't think uh, the general gaming audience really reckons with, like, how influential Yume Nikki is. Uh, oh, God, yeah. I, I feel like you couldn't... Uh, I feel like uh, the majority of the remaining... The remainders of Game Press couldn't pick Yume Nikki out of a lineup. <laughs> God. I th- I... If, if, if I could be mean for a second, I think the a, a major problem is, like, the largest critical voices are, like, have very are very bland. <laughs> um I yeah no I I it is interesting like you know if you approach if you take like a very I I don't know enough about games press to comment on right anything at all no but, no listen like I'm, if you if you take a look into if you take a look and you take a look into like game history and stuff like that and obviously I I also can't comment on game history because I'm one person who has right. like a subset of games that she's into but like you can draw all sorts of crazy lines between like influence and sub stuff right where yeah. like you know undertale doesn't exist if you mean nikki doesn't exist yeah or, under, does or undertale at least exists if, if toho yeah. doesn't exist yeah <laughs> undertale doesn't exist if toho doesn't exist toho doesn't exist if you know some weird game that zune played when he was 10 or whatever yeah. didn't exist Ooh. you know like it's it's cool to draw all these lines and like and think about stuff like that uh and but like yeah, so game games that have been like slightly offbeat, I don't know, have been around for yeah, however many decades. Yeah. Right, oh, probably, definitely. probably since uh, the inception of games. Except you know, it's harder to uh, because yeah. you don't have the same. I don't think it's reached the same historian kind of level of like people are very 
I was mm. meanwhile I called them bland. I should have said they're not adventurous. Uh, Probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I think it's hard. I try not to blame anyone in particular because I yeah. think it, the unfortunate part is like being the, in the press means the job you never does, have any money, right. and the job <laughs> and doesn't allow you to do, the, the, yeah. the job does not allow adventurousness. Uh, yeah, no, nothing is there to pay you for for talking about Yumi Nikki or you know. Yeah, mm. Yumi so, Nikki also not being that obscure of a game, relatively. Right. <laughs> like, right. Oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> but it's that same any. It's that same kind of issue where it's it, it's this kind of self feedback loop where uh, yeah. you, it doesn't pay that, so you have to talk about you know uh, un, unbanished uh, Michael's return or whatever, <laughs> like eighty million. Uh, yeah, definitely. the new Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. There there was a game that just came out that was something called like Unbanished Sirens Requiem or some <laughs> made up name, oh, nice. and it's probably. I, I wonder. Yeah. Third person cover shooter or something. I I wonder why the name like and this is, maybe this is just me not knowing crap, but like I wonder why the name Unbanished Sirens Re- Requiem sounds very nothing to me. That, that where when you say like highly responsive to prayers, yes, I'm like that's, words, that's, that's that. the good stuff right there. <laughs> right, well, because I, they, yeah. they're they're both kind, they both are like word salad adjacent, but one sounds like it means something. And it's not overused. How many other Ooh. games, uh, you know, have yeah. uh, they're like it's 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 not biting on it's its own kind of vibe, you know? Uh, yeah, I think I think it just it sounds more like interest. I mean, it just sounds more interesting. I don't know. I could just be an idiot, but yeah. But no, oh, wait. I said yeah at the wrong time. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you're like I could just be an idiot. I'm like yeah, yeah, you could. I, be. I, I, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, uh, yeah. uh, I'll say, oh, thank God. Good thing I did that. Uh, never mind. Uh, there was a, there was a time in the past where I used, uh, uh, what's it called? The keys I used for my recording. I was like, I very rarely do math on this thing, but it's the, the, I try not to do math. So. Um, I don't actually my because my start stop stream is the numpad slash and uh, multiply, but oh. unfortunately I only hit slash which is start, so uh, it never stopped recording. <laughs> um, but <laughs> the math has come in and it cost me about uh, uh, one eighty a buck eighty to make a copy of indie po- physical indie apocalypse. Oh, nice! Really. Yeah. Okay, I want I want to make for this game then. I want to. Yeah. That'll be fun to build a con. Yeah, because it, it's fun. like the the cases are about 40, 40 cents a piece. You, you get thirty okay. of them for twenty bucks, and I mean AliExpress prices you know vary all the time, of course. Oh, uh, that's sure. But it's like a buck fifty for fifty, and I put on eight gig. But so if you don't, if you're going smaller, mm. it'll be obviously cheaper. But you know, I got I'm gonna, fi- I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you for more details about this later. Yes, I'm and I, you. and I'll also <laughs> mention something else. That I had, another idea I had kicking around too. Uh, sure. Uh, but yeah, I guess with the, with the manufacturing and stuff, like I, I guess there's, there's there's like power in like having the money up front to like bulk buy and stuff. Yes. Like the, the difference between buying like a thousand and a hundred, like yeah you know, so much like you know you can get something for like maybe 50p a oh yeah piece compared to, like you know pence yeah i'll say uh <laughs> yeah. up front i bought bulk of each of them so the upfront cost for the 50 is like 100 bucks mm. okay which but like, if, if you're if you're gonna keep around for a while right yeah and, it, and if you're like let's okay let me let me do math on a calculator that doesn't involve uh me entering any buttons i'll do i can do it on my phone while we talk there we go that way, I don't accidentally stop any recordings. <laughs> like, I think say- with, with, with like small scale stuff as well, is it's finding the physical space. Uh, so, like for example, you could order like five hundred memory cards, for example. But if you're living in like a one person like flat or something, yeah, that's gonna take up oh, like shit. a hefty portion of your living space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I if I had to, um, let's let's say for instance, I wasn't actually, uh. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't splitting my money between like ten other people. If I was mm. just selling this thing straight up uh, 
for cost, I would make it back after I sold like 10 of them. And I would have oh, nice. 40, le- 40 left over of pure profits. Uh, Amazing. And then and that's kind of like the same thing with like zines is like books and prints and stuff are relatively cheap to pr- the print compared to what you charge for them. Ultimately, like, yeah, I mean, that's that's capitalism, baby. Uh, it's capitalism. Yeah. I mean, that's why it's selling virtual stuff is great because it's yeah. very free Ooh. afterwards. But oh, definitely. it is the, the cases are very cool. So I, yeah. I love this idea. And I think it works better at like I think it's going to get uh, harder and harder for uh people without budgets to compete for a digital like a digital space to some extent oh yeah. definitely i think that is becoming the case very quickly um because like it's like well if you don't have a raw fury annapurna devolver etc like marketing budget or whatever and like kind of, that can kind of put you by default inside of showcases and things like that it becomes harder to get your your game in front of people and this is this is all assuming that you're making a video game ass video game uh yeah sure if you're not making a video game ass video game throw in the towel baby you're in a chance (laughs) (laughs) you you gotta find you have to like find the most ridiculous way to get out in front of people like it, it truly oh, becomes definitely. more it's it's truly like a, a ridiculous lottery that you get to put like one or three tickets in right like, it's like whenever if you, if, yeah when i see people do like when i when occasionally there'll be like a call online she's like hey i'm gonna write up my indie game feature for x website you know mm-hmm. send me your indie games and i'll send indie apocalypse over of course if i'm in the right yeah. mood but then I'll see the obviously they won't include it. But then I'll see yeah. the list afterwards. I'll be like, "Oh, these are video games." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these are about guys getting points. Uh, oh man! And winning objectives, which is like what not mm. what ninety percent of indie apocalypse is. So yeah, it, it, it's 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 so tricky to get them out there, isn't it? Like lo- lots of indie games on that kind of level kind of live or die by like uh youtube playthroughs almost right because like just, just get my eyeballs on your projects like mm-hmm. you know it's the difference between having a hundred thousand people watch it or a thousand <laughs> which you know opens up like a lot of doors once you have that initial set of eyes on your projects and yeah. stuff because then then it starts snowballing into like this uh you know, collective interest and stuff and you, you you can then broach it to publishers and stuff like more easily if that's the kind of angle you want to go <laughs> yeah, my like then... my like oh sorry <laughs> oh no no it's all right <laughs> my my kind of like loose loose theory my my theory to approach that that this is my the, the thing i am trying to tackle as a developer who would eventually like to spend more time making games and less time working jobs that are horrible um is is like the idea like i kind of like the idea that like you slowly release games you make games in your your quote unquote brand or like your style or like the thing that people attach to of your your humanity in the way that new nomura's humanity is built belts right yeah like people who like you for the crap that you do and like maybe over time if you do it and you get better at it like you start to build a slow 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 following right of people who Mm people who like your stuff and people who always want to see your stuff and whatever and then like you do that for 10 or 15 years without making any money and then like you eventually have enough critical mass of people who will just be very excited for the stuff that you make that eventually it like cracks the you know the steam algorithm or whatever and then like you get popular and that's like the theory that i don't think will work and also you have to make games for 15 years without a profit yes (laughs) (laughs) that's that's uh, a rough theory but <laughs> that's that's i i tell i say that uh multiple times like hey you know this will pay off in 10 years but it's a hard thing to tell somebody uh oh yeah that it's you know the the unfortunate curse of being ahead of your time or whatever yeah is that you're there's... currently not in that time <laughs> there's there's definitely waves with games and stuff isn't there as well like super super important times to like get into the spaces so for example the yeah. emergence of the mobile store like had had you been making games and got like a good one at that point like yeah. you know it could make or break you to the point of being able to like potentially establish your own company and then turn it into like a, a long-term 
uh, sort of job sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the people who did who did well making cool indie games that mm. mostly video game s video games in in two thousand eight to like two thousand eleven mm. are the people we see around the most. It feels like right, right. And that's not there's, there's always new people, right? There's always new people mm. showing up. Like I don't, you know, Zalavir Nelson is the is the person I can think of who is like. That's a name that I, I, I hadn't really seen around before in, like, the quote-unquote indie scene that I pay way too much attention to. Right. But, like, oh. now nowadays, like, everyone, like, I think everyone who's who's kind of connected to the indie space probably has heard about Dalavir. So, uh, but most people who are kind of around are, like, a lot of them were people who were around, you know, 12 years oh. ago. And breaking in now is, is, it's just harder. Which is, oh, definitely. you know... It, the reality of life or whatever like there are definitely waves like you said yeah that's that's why my strategy is just, is just to stick around and outlive everybody uh, that's a really good strategy. that's kind of my strategy too and just, just basically, basically just like <laughs> as everyone else burns out i'll still be the only one around <laughs> I, I, I have nothing if not perseverance right uh, You're, like highlander or something <laughs> i have that's I, true <laughs> it's truly like the, the the anime hero who just simply refuses to to stop getting up, and you're like, all right, well, screw it. I guess we lose. <laughs> I, ha- I have my one unofficial goal is that I'm at least lasting at least one day longer than Pow Comics. Uh, uh, RIP. <laughs> I think they had like a good ten year run or so. Oh man. <laughs> But like, if I can just if that's my if I can outlast that, I'll be like, yes, I'm gonna put a feather in my cap as self published alternative <laughs> art publisher or whatever. Uh, Wait, did you say pow com- pow 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 pow? I love pow comics. I do too. Wait, P E O W pow. Yes, pow. Okay, okay, we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, yeah rip and peace. Yeah. Pe- I I, I mm-hmm. wish I bought that shirt there. There like their death shirt i was like man i wish i had that <laughs> yeah but anyway my girlfriend's a huge fan but i think i missed out on that shirt yeah i was like that because i mean i'm very nakedly a lot of my inspiration comes from indie comics <laughs> and the indie comic space of like the vibes i want to curate in uh, indie apocalypse that kind of personal experimental it's sometimes not even like experimental in terms of like the very broad experimental the experiment but it's still like densely experimental compared to the uh, the mainstream. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, someone's got to figure this stuff out, and you and and to some extent, people have been doing it, like you said, in other genres and other mediums for so long that, like, you know, we don't have to start totally from from scratch. No, mm. no, yeah, yeah. And uh, I aspire, I aspire not to. I, I it's still very strange to me that like. At one point when I started, I was like, oh, no repeat contributors for six months, thinking naively, surely I will inspire there to be more <laughs> uh, <laughs> small press style games publishing. And it, it, that uh, no repeat has sat on indefinite for probably <laughs> two years. Uh, yeah, gosh, it, it, it's it's quite surprising that there's not more kind of projects like this out there because it, it's, it's an absolutely amazing project. Uh uh, I will not yeah. take a compliment because I'll say I also release a yearly uh, year in review that tells you that's deeply unprofitable. <laughs> so <laughs> that could. Oh, no. uh, well, it, I got it. It's yeah. so tricky to turn a profit, though, it, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, wrong, wrong business to get into profits, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, uh, Rip Pow, in part of their thing, they said, this never paid us a salary. I was like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I think I think I did the math for for how how many hours to money that Boss Game has made so far, and it's yeah. not on Steam yet. So that could change, but oh, I think great. right now it's somewhere around like I got paid two dollars an hour to work on Boss Game. You right? And I think that's <laughs> actually above the average by like a long shot. Yes, no, <laughs> I, don't I, think people make oh, I I make I make more I make more money uh, when I do my redemption runs uh, <laughs> per hour. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it is that I, I mean because of most people it is zero dollars per right. hour. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. My, my, mine's mine's probably like twenty pence or something. Yeah, I, <laughs> far far too many people. Uh, the fact that a non-zero number of people have told me 
Indie Apocalypse is the first time I got paid and the most time I got paid. Uh, oh my it's God. like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, rough. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Because, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm very candid that I don't have a lot of money in it. There's not a lot of money in Indie Apocalypse. <laughs> it's not a big, uh, it's not a big payout thing, but fortunately there are things like, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, the queer games bundle is like very fortunate. That is like, yes, I get to see a lot of developers. I know make a lot more money. <laughs> I'm like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> That's great. I, I, I never, I always forget to pay attention. I also like hadn't, I, I would have liked to put boss game in that, but I like totally did not even pay attention to it happening at all. Right. But, right. But, uh, yeah, I, it, I am glad. It, and this is, but that's another like again. It's it's between you know you doing this and between them putting together the queer games bundle. It's just like people trying mm, to find out, right? Trying to figure out how to how to get money and pay rent under like whatever hellish system that we're in, where they're yeah. like, all right, we're all gonna try different mm. ways to to, to get money. <laughs> like, right, and there needs to be yeah. like uh, more of them because like, listen, I'm paying you. Uh, 60 bucks queer games bundles paying you maybe 400 and like that does not sustain you throughout a year there needs to be more than just the two Mm. that's the that's the secret about these massive these massive bundles don't do the math of how much each creator is actually getting you're like "Uh uh-oh yeah that's the unfortunate part yeah that's I, i that's one of the problems i think i have with them is that i think they make a big dollar value that people get very excited about and then they think ah yes we solved queer poverty in game development because it made seventy thousand dollars. And you're like, don't do seventy thousand divided by three hundred. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you know division? Because it, it goes down very quickly. <laughs> like, uh, right. So it's kind of like it's one of those double-edged swords of like, or not double-edged. What it's one of those things of good and bad things existing at the same time. Yeah. That's not, that wouldn't be a double-edged sword because it implies one of the sides of the swords is cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 good money. It's a lot of money. It's not enough money. Right, like, right. Yeah, right. It's it's not enough money for the rest of, for these developers to make zero dollars the rest of the year. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, I, I think with with, with itch. Io as well. Like the uh, the the co op bundles and like charity drives that they do is like so important. Like it, it you know it raises so much money. For it. it just has this fantastic like. Um, yeah, you know, it's very good seeing people's creative projects um, kind of like used in such a way to like conjure like goods from as as a collective. Yeah, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, I, those are the ones I always like to see because I, I, you know, mm. I, I hope that money goes to those things in like a way that's like you know, like you know, to, to people are putting in their games and raising five million dollars for like important charities is like yeah, okay, good. Mm. That, that's good. And I, yeah, I, I run my own charity. It's called Indie Puckles. <laughs> <laughs> Doing I, great work. I, I'm waiting for the uh, the pledge drive money to come in, and it was like it was like twenty nine hundred dollars, and I'm gonna be like, oh wow, my royalties going out are about twenty nine hundred dollars. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, but that's also a good thing. But it's also once again no. talking about a lot of money. That it results to be seven somewhere between seven and eleven dollars for everybody. Hmm. I guess that, that's that's the tricky thing about like these ginormous collaborations. Like the the more uh, contributors you have, the more eyeballs the projects get, but also the further like spread the the budgets yeah. is yeah. ultimately. <laughs> that's why I, I found it. I'm sorry. sorry. No. No, no you're okay. good. Uh, I was saying that's the the issue. That's why I kind of like the. That's why I cap it at ten. I think ten is like a good anthology like mm. number. Because everyone oh, like uh, the between Patreon sales, I average about like eight hundred dollars a month coming in, and that right, sure. that that gets everyone like an extra fifty bucks or so. And I think that's like not a bad uh, rate of it's money. Pizza money. <laughs> no, if, it, it, it it's. I think I think anything more than ten would like. I think it starts to get overwhelming very quickly. Oh, of right. course. Yeah, it's it's also why I do the very my very uh. Why I don't do a co-op bundle, I do my very labor-intensive way of doing this bundle. Uh, I, I I don't even like to call it a bundle. This anthology is because it sure. force it forces everybody to get every game when they download it. Mm. 
I do like that. Whereas like the bundles, you're like, oh, I'm gonna play the 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 high profile games that were added to this bundle, and I'll probably oh yes download <laughs> any of the yeah. rest. The that's number of- that's <laughs> a tricky thing, isn't it? Like, uh, yeah. yeah, you have like thirty old games, and then like some really like popular ones get added, and then like no one like checks out the, the games that were initially in it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or it doesn't matter. I mean, even like you when you end up with those bundles with a hundred games, right. Like, the mm. fact that I will simply like look at those and be like, oh, I think there were some games in here that I wanted to check out, but there's a hundred of them and I can't be bothered to like yeah. dig up which ones. It's just more True. friction, right? That's why. Like that's, it's... Yeah, that's. I'm trying yeah. to. I try, that's why I do my best to like. Like if I, uh, indie pocket was based on like comic anthologies largely, and if I bought a comics anthology and then I had to go to each person's page to read them, yeah, I, mm. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, no, you'd forget about it. You'd right. move on and. Yeah, right. But, yeah, but there's, there's there's lots of times with the co-op bundles as well, where like there ends up being so many games in it that you end up sometimes buying the game twice before realizing that you've already got it, and it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, for sure. And so all of yeah, you there's so many games I like eight, eight copies of. Like, and it's like one day I'll play them, maybe. Yeah. I like to imagine like a, a theoretical time in the future where I have like a, a summer vacation, but it's like three years long. And it allows me to catch up on all the media that I've wanted to experience. Yes. And it will simply never Ooh. exist. But like in my head, I still have like summer vacation somewhere. I've, oh, I've, definitely. <laughs> I've gotten very good at both never working on weekends uh, and making sure I have two day or two hours at the end of the night that I spend for movie time. Mm, that's like really good. Other also, it helps if you are just generally by yourself and you don't need to. Your time is not occupied by another mm. person. You get a lot more time. Uh, oh, definitely. that does happen. But yeah, I think the like I'm the not saying that too. <laughs> Which is was probably the most free time people have had <laughs> in years upon years. <laughs> yeah, and that's I'm also sure. not like a, a what should I say aspirational goal, you know. Oh god! No. It's no. like oh, I love to be yeah. alone. I do. I do love to be alone. But that's uh, me. Yeah, everyone's got different vibes, right? Yeah. But speaking of yeah. different vibes, we've been vibing on the show for almost for over two hours now. Oh gosh! Yeah. Believe it or not, and we've got to we've got to keep this show uh, reasonably length. We got to close it every now and then and tell people the. Uh, I, I I try to keep it under an hour, but then sometimes I keep going and then it goes too long. Uh, <laughs> Because you know this is my uh, my unofficial post con hangout style where everyone just m- oh. m- like mills around for too long, <laughs> long after they <laughs> thought they should have gone home or back to the hotel rooms. Uh, but oh yeah, but it's like you know it's one of those things. How often are uh, I'm let's I you know it's possible uh, that next year if I travel more that I'll wind up in the Midwest. But I'm probably not going to go across the pond, as they say, anytime oh, soon. No, <laughs> it's it's dead expensive as well, isn't it? It's like almost yeah. a grand or something. For like, yeah. Before. <laughs> yeah. I, I I do not understand spending more than $1,000 on one thing. That is not a car. Oh, gosh, no. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> that, like, yeah. it just, the, that concept is just not registered in my brain that a, th- that a singular thing can cost that much money. <laughs> Agreed. But uh, like it's, people do it. People will just buy. Like there was that mm. Apple VR thing. I'm like, no, I would never in my yeah, life buy know. anything that costs thirty five hundred dollars. How would you even? Who oh, does yeah. that? Yeah. It's like you're seeing the class demarcations online by mm. people who are like uh, considering that it was even a thing that you would buy, not just like uh, anyway. Who would ever buy yeah, with, 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 with like Apple phones as well, like each generation when oh. people are like getting rid of their phone after like a year, it's like what? <laughs> yes, no, I I buy I buy a phone every five oh, years okay. and I buy the cheapest possible phone. It's like a hundred dollar phone or whatever. I've never, like, like, I've, like never a brick almost. <laughs> I've never understood buying like the newest model of a thing. No, right? yeah, there's, like, there's why there's would you not just get the one that's two years old and like thirty percent off or whatever? <laughs> right, like, yeah. it's gonna be just as good. it doesn't matter. No, like, yeah, it's, but this, this is all to the point of me trying to end the show. What am I doing? I'm sorry. I'm making it hard. Right. Let's keep uh, it going. Let's keep it yeah, rolling. Uh, no, this is the other part of the show is where I don't actually end it. 
I just keep on going. But uh, mm-hmm. does anyone have any last minute thoughts, questions, things they need to get out before we get to the important? Everyone's for your part of every podcast. Uh, Toho is really good. Check it out. Yes. <laughs> Second. So, if nothing else, check out the music because that'll get you into the rest of it. Mm, the, mu- yeah. the music's. So, and if you don't like, you know, chippy tunes and ridiculous trumpets, then just go listen to the jazz music or the cafe music or the elect or the Eurobeat or whatever else they have. Whatever it is, go listen yeah. to that version of Toho music. <laughs> And, and then go and, play Toho. And if Bullet Hell scare you, you can play any number of fan games. You know. Yeah. I play. There's like cafe. I play. There's like a cafe sim one. If you want to like. I want to play the cafe sim one. Uh, okay. I I played a good portion of that cafe sim one. If you want to get a real taste of a lot of the Toho characters without having to die by a billion bullets. Is that in English now? It is. Uh, uh, is something in sim yet? Something something <laughs> Izakaya, I think is what it's called. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I just type Izakai as if that is going to help me. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to... Toho, Toho. Toho Misty as Izakai. Yes. It's fun. Okay, There's a lot it. of Toho people in it. I love Toho. It's like a diner dash. <laughs> I'm uh, into it. Uh, and with a lot of little Toho people in it. They come and they eat food, and you're like, Hey, uh, Marisa, have some food. <laughs> Let me serve you... Oh man! Don't steal my food, please. I'm trying not to make more comments on things because I'm only going to make this show take long. <laughs> no, that's it's part of the. You see, the people listening don't know about the secret third hour, which is the hour the sign recorded. <laughs> Hi, I um I watched a great anime called uh Iz- Izakai Izakai, which is you know the Izakai genre of yeah. like getting teleported to another world, and it's all about like learning how to make Japanese cuisine and they're like showing it to like oh, people awesome. in like a fantasy of Germany. I got so many good recipes from that show. Cause at the end of every episode, like a chef shows you how to make what's in the show. And yeah. I'm like, oh, That's, nice. this is great. Yeah. But these, these ones, it's so tempting to like take all of the recipes and make them, isn't it? There was a, there was yeah. one on Netflix that I really enjoyed, uh, which was like an anime style one called Kantere, the sweet tooth salary man. He, he did these oh. gorgeous, like, fluffy pancakes with butter on and, like, an espresso. And, like, I, 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 was, I was making this for weeks off the back of watching the show. Oh, that sounds so good, <laughs> actually. <was> delicious. <laughs> I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, there's, like, there's a whole subgenre of, like, the recipe manga, I guess, which is Ooh. sometimes, like, they sometimes have actual stories, but then there's also recipes in there as well, basically. It's that, a whole... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, amazing! Uh, I think it's, it, it feels like a subgenre uh, that I've seen occasionally. Yeah, of like maybe maybe that's a way of like selling a story. Like, okay, I'll make a recipe one, and then I can also make a story about whatever I want to make it about. You know, uh, amazing! Yeah. It's maybe, like maybe, food maybe... Porn, right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like what is that? What's that? Uh, 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 what did you eat yesterday? I think is one of them. Yes, I think that's the name oh. of it. Where it's like two elderly, elderly, I call them. They're they know they're like forties or fifty. They're like their fifties or something. Uh, a gay couple, and it's like ninety percent of each of it is like them making the food they make every day. So oh, I wonder awesome. if it's, I wonder if this is one of those weird things where like you're backdooring the story you want to make is like, but also I'll make it a food thing. Uh, oh, with with recipe things. Picture how fun it would be to have yeah, a this- indie apocalypse recipe book. Based on like some oh of the games, God. that would be that would be phenomenal. <laughs> okay, like you could have some very questionable recipes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I I wonder uh, what I would what I could do. Like, I listen. There's a lot of high concept stuff I could do that I just don't. If you give me a lot of money, I I can have the time oh, to do. Yeah. If, if, yeah, if, it circles back to money all the right. time, doesn't it? It's like, it, you know, there's a there's there's a point where it's like, you know, if there was ten thousand pounds or something, yeah, like you you could expand it exponentially, explore all the mediums, produce like vinyl toys, resograph prints, right. blind bags, even like, yes. oh, there's, there's just such a wealth of stuff to like delve into and explore. Right, silver key lime, <laughs> silver key lime pie, exactly. Silver <laughs> key lime, it's very good. <laughs> Uh, uh it yeah it bounces all over your house constantly <laughs> uh, uh, defies the laws of gravity 
uh, amazing. <laughs> there's oh oh my god. I yes okay so there would be. I, I don't know what the exact recipe is, but I would say the Sylvie uh, key lime pie would have a little chair on it. Like those pizzas would have little tables. It'd have a little <laughs> oh, chair nice. on the top. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's good. That's, that's the extent of that. But uh, speaking of the extent <laughs> of that, I'm trying to make this the extent of the show, but it keeps on, keeps on trucking. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of things that can be done if you don't have to work a 40-hour job, you know, and just people oh, throw piles definitely. of money at you. <laughs> uh, uh, is, you know, the, the the origin of Indie Apocalypse is that I spent a decade not spending a lot of money and paying off debt <laughs> so that I could afford to do this. Mm. Uh, a good way to live. Yeah. Not having debt is a good way to live in general. I have it now again. Uh, oh, because I had. That. I had to get a new car because yeah, where I live, I physically need a car to get to a job. Uh, mm. Yeah, I think that that's that, that's the big difference between like the UK and America, just like how how like easy the public transport and stuff is, because there's like a lot more like train infrastructure and public buses and stuff. Yes. Uh, you know, around England, uh, compared to also, also like walkable cities and stuff, and like right. just that older. Yeah kind of like more ancient um kind of like style with building towns and stuff yeah the the downside the plus side of living more rurally is it's cheaper the downside is like you can walk 30 minutes to your first job and that job is a gas station oh yeah 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 that, that, that's basically been my reality for like the last like six months right there, there, there's a mountain pass we had to go over to like get to get to our jobs and it was destroying the car <laughs> oh, yeah so i besides besides having to very emergency get a car but because it's falling apart but i also that was to get to a higher paying job so it kind of it all balanced out if i had to do that at my at a prior job i think that it could have possibly spelled the end like that's like that's how precarious it is sometimes oh gosh yeah like, <laughs> like it could have been like well now i have to pay off a car indie apocalypse is over <laughs> we had a good run uh but i always I, that's like the the actually I think it probably could have uh, survived a little because I I budgeted it on like to be so that it was like if nobody bought this I need to be able to still put it out every month if literally oh. nobody buys it, I need to be able to f- afford to put it out every month I mean I got a little big for my britches and started doing commission games and things like that and increasing the <laughs> cost of it every month oh. uh but. Whatever, I like it. I think it works out. Uh, speaking of things I like, I like these people here, and I hope that you like their games. And Lily, where can people? We've talked about Boss Game, but we where, where can people <laughs> find Boss Game? Okay, so Boss Game is available on Android and iOS. Um, so you can find it in Google Play Store or yeah. the Apple Store because if you're buying stuff on those phones, that's where you have to buy them. Do you have you good SEO on... on those phone stores? Do people just type I... Boss Game and then they got it? Yeah, if you type, if you type, if you type in Boss Game, you'll get it because oh, perfect. it's a silly name. But uh, if you don't type Boss Game, type Boss Game, the final boss is my heart. Yes. It's also on it.io if you want the Android version. And also it's coming out for PC and Mac on both Steam and itch.io in July. So... What that means is if you buy it on itch.io now, you can play it on your phone, and then it'll come out on your computer, and they can play it on your computer later. Yeah. Also, probably going to raise the price to like ten bucks or something. Yeah. So that's what I it. did, and then I just yeah never played it on oh, my yeah. phone, <laughs> but you can still buy it. <laughs> well, and then yeah, I just, it's just a very long pre-order. Yeah, you got in early. That was the smart move. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Other than that, I'm I'm like everywhere as it's me, Lily V. I'm I'm still on Twitter. Yeah. For whatever Listen. reason. <laughs> I, I the the reason is is because there's no other platform that like is what Twitter is. Uh, yeah, no, I I have a lot of friends on Twitter. Unfortunately, like people I actually oh, keep yeah. in touch with, which yeah. is not great. But you know, to me, it is, is like an it advertising is. platform, and nothing else is a massive advertising platform like Twitter is. Yeah, I like I like co-host. I like the vibes of co-host, but it it's like mostly a hundred other nerds on co-host. Yes, and so. I, <laughs> I I I am I am mixed on the vibes on co-host. I've seen very I've seen very rancid vibes on co-host. 
I oh, like. I hear people talk about those vibes. I never see those vibes. Yeah. So I don't know what I did, but that worked out. I've well seen multiple me. people delete posts because people are very obnoxious yeah, about yeah. like. Uh, oh. uh, it's the, it's it feels like it's got a little bit of that uh, Tumblr know it allism uh, <laughs> to oh, it. Oh god! Oh uh, no! Just uh, the most annoying people. But that's oh, every yeah. website. But it's just smaller, so. Y- you, your your chance to yeah. your chance to come into the sphere of the mo- the world's most annoying person is much higher. Mm. Simply... Yeah, I think I think Twitter, unfortunately, since like the Elon Musk uh, yes. acquisition, is slowly becoming a little little bit worse. Like oh there, no, it's, it's definitely times where, like you'll be scrolling through and it's like oh my god, this is the most putrid disgusting thing i've ever seen someone oh, say <laughs> it's, it's it's much it's much worse but it's still but it's very a large like, platform that can throw my stuff, stuff at <laughs> oh of course i i think we'll say with twitter as well it's just putting out like words and thoughts yeah. whereas like you know compared to making like an instagram post for example that that always feels like a lot more serious you know and, like yeah. uh kind of like effort consuming almost uh right. you know i guess i guess just being able to like throw out um you know like a stream of thought almost like play my game please <laughs> sort of yes. thing. Yeah. like this game's happening this game's very cool yeah yeah <laughs> there is, is... like is you know it's a lot more casual but like also like very fun I, also it's a lot less pressure than writing a blog which which is good as well <laughs> right yeah it's listen they're all i'm i'm like i'm like i'm very biased i'm a very like non-social media person in general in terms of like using it for social interaction mm-hmm. uh i prefer to that i mean but listen if you my advice would be host a weekly radio show uh and invite Heck people yeah. onto it <laughs> that's my social solution Amazing. Uh, but that's not a practical one uh so so really i was like i'm a little mean to, i'm also uh, uh a little meaner to things than i ought to be some not not than i ought to be more than like uh I don't have toxic positivity will never enter my veins. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, I kind of, and I, I think in general, I like to convey the idea that I just don't think most things are uh, equivocally good or bad. Uh, mm. They're not just like all good, all bad all the time. It's like a bit of both, you know? So there, there oh, is no cool. perfect social media website. Co-host mm. be nice to me still. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still want my pitch for website that you can only communicate with each other via Dark Souls message. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. That's the perfect one. <laughs> or even better, folks, get your own website. Then you then you determine <laughs> the rules of engagement. Gosh. Uh, I do encourage people. Yeah, I think with, 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 with like MMOs, that's like quite a fun sort of old social media sort of yeah. style, oh, isn't yeah. it? Like these, these these like live hangout places are like few and far between these days, but yes. they're very cool. Also, oh my gosh, with websites as well, I wish they would allow you to customize the pages more, like the early YouTube sort of ones where you can add like the banners, change the HTML, yeah, that sort of stuff. Would be awesome if that came back more. <laughs> there was there was a to to talk about Final Fantasy fourteen for a brief half second. There <laughs> there was a guy in Limsa Lominsa who was always lying down, and I would always jump over him. <laughs> Oh, amazing. No matter when I logged on, he was sitting there lying down on his back, and I don't know why. <laughs> but it's like, yes, there is that weird culture to it. Uh, but cu- speaking of culture, Shallow Lagoon, you also make art, which is culture. Where can people find it? Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, on Instagram. Oh, oh my God. Wait, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> Um, oh, sorry, I was just jumping scared by by a family member. Um, <laughs> basically, I'm on the top floor, and they just appeared in the window behind yeah. me. I forgot we had a balcony. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Instagram, Shally Lagoon on Instagram, or Shally Lagoon on itch.io for the games. Yes. They're quite good, a little bit miserable, but um, yeah, you, you know, it's worth checking out. Um, and there's lots of fun stuff. Yeah, listen, you should go and play these people's games. Go and buy a boss game straight up and, you know, and go buy, go play any of them. You have so many games here, Shell Lagoon. And if you buy any yeah, Apocalypse... Yeah, I, I, I probably made too many. Uh, no, that's they, a good they, thing they... to do. <laughs> there's lots to check out. Some are better than others. Yeah. 
<laughs> but like, us. Uh... <laughs> these games are mostly about the vibes. But, yes, you know, no, the vibes I had... are horrible and great and interesting and worth checking out. Boss yeah. game looks fantastic as well. Like that, that's that's something that I'm definitely going to check yes, out. Yes, you should. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh yeah. I yeah. have to actually start digging through all the indie apocalypses. I have so many of them. And yeah, I, it's, I highly I like. I, it's that same problem where it's like I had uh, eighty million. I had like a giant stack of uh, Criterion films that I built up from sale those fifty percent off sales over the years, and then I just never watched oh. any of them. But now I'm basically done. The pile is pretty much empty. Woo-hoo. And that is that is like the backlog is threatening. Uh, but amazing. Yes, uh, speaking of Indie Apocalypse, that thing, uh, you ought to buy that. I think it's a good thing to buy. If you buy issue 40, if enough of you will buy it, uh, Shao Lagoon here gets like five bucks eventually. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, listen, it's which which translates into like, I don't know, uh, uh, four and a quarter pounds or something. <laughs> Uh, oh, amazing! No, but, but that's that's so good, though. That, that's that's a lot more than most of my games are made. So yes, I am incredibly that's, thankful and that's enthusiastic part, about that. that. How much? How much of a Tesco meal deal is that equal to? Oh, it's one and a half. But they've introduced a new Tesco meal deal for five pounds, the luxury one. So you oh. have to be very careful which bits of the Tesco meal deal you get. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. If I go to, if I travel across the across the sea, it is to go to England to. I've become obsessed with the Tesco meal deal. It's uh, it's pretty good. I'd say. It, I was gonna say it lives up to the hype, but like I I I I'm gonna leave that to you to decide. Yeah. But there's well, lots of good stuff. You, you can get like a summer fried chicken wrap and uh, like a samosa or some eggs and like. See, you know, I, which is uh, that's one of the weirder options. As, but... as an <laughs> avid fan of the Arizona tall cans. It's, oh, nice! Tricky to find in Tesco's though. Like, <laughs> do you do you don't? Also, yeah, I, there's definitely a price cow gym with some of them because they're meant yeah. to be like 99p. Right. But sometimes you find them for like three quid. Wait, do you do you have the Arizona tall cans over there? I don't. Occasionally, uh, yeah. in like premieres and co-ops, sometimes okay. like sometimes they have like an American section, which is probably <laughs> not very authentically American. Yeah, like some random things like hot dogs and stuff, and that, uh, that sounds American to me. Cereals and stuff with uh, with the marshmallows, which are trickier to find in the UK. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious what is in the American section. Oh. Ooh, so. uh, so hot dogs, there's yeah. those uh, crispy onions. Uh, okay. There's like a mustard, which is, which is very good. Yes. Um, gherkins as well, like like pickles. Okay. Uh, I mean, like most of it. <laughs> in retrospect, most of it is like things that you'd craft a burger with, which right. is, is probably like an over generalization of the cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> the the American the American section is a, a deconstructed burger. Yeah. <laughs> basically oh, basically oh usually marshmallows the giant marshmallows yeah okay i now, see that's the thing i didn't think i didn't know was american uh, mm. it's I always think, i think one thing i'd be curious about as well is it, it, in uh america like is there like a uk england section yes like i, I can imagine there's some odd things in there it's, it's where i get arrow bars sometimes if i want one those, those are quite good. There's lots of variants that you can get over here. I think they did like a caramel sort of one recently. There's a caramel one, a mint one. Yeah, uh, I was. About, I, was a, I know. Just we have just the the plain ones. I was about to open my web browser as if it would, as if I could like look at my local supermarket, <laughs> <laughs> as if that would somehow get me the answer of what is over there. Um, are pims? Are there pims? Is pims a thing? Pims. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What the, the, the booze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a thing. No, it's maybe a... not that then. Oh no, oh, it is pims. Uh... Like the little, the little, little biscuits. Oh wait, wait, pims. Are... I'm, I'm gonna have to look this up. One sec. They pims. may not be English. They might just be English style, English looking. Oh, I think that's like that's more so like uh, something European. from Europe. But it yeah. does look like a jaffa cake. Jaffa yes. cakes are the quintessential English yes. ones to look out for. <laughs> I, I've had, I've had, I bought and ate a sleeve of Jaffa cakes before. Oh, amazing! Yeah, it's very Moorish uh, for like uh, the English football teams as well. Like yeah. some of them are like halftime snack, 
is Jaffa Cakes, which which is quite fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I I remember hearing a lot. I watched Spaced a long time ago, and oh, remember nice. hearing a lot about Jaffa Cakes. And I had to. I was like, Jaffa Cakes. <laughs> That's from that TV show. But speaking oh, of yeah. ending this, speaking of shows, I got to end this show, much okay. like Space ended, and was <laughs> uh, underappreciated in its time globally. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of Indie Apocalypse, you should go to IndiePocalypse.com and buy it. Uh, you can buy it there. I usually I say go to IndiePocalypse.com and you have to still buy it off of itch, but now you can just buy it from my actual ass website, and the money Woo-hoo. goes to me. And it's so much. It goes so much faster <laughs> um, than like. Uh, I feel like the 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 month long waiting period for the money from itch is like the what you pay for the fact that they organize everything for you mm. but uh yeah you can go there go to indiepocalypse.com slash tapes to uh buy physical editions of indie apocalypse uh you get uh, you get them in a little cassette case with the the cover art for the game uh little, their little numbered spine so you know you have to collect them all uh, all 41 of them, 43 of them technically. Uh, if you're interested in being involved in Indie Apocalypse, uh, like having your game in it, that is to say, uh, go to IndiePocalypse.com slash submit. Uh, and looking, if you're like, I don't know if I make video games that are marketable, I'm like, I got, have I got a spot for you. It's called Indie Apocalypse. I'm looking for a, a shorter, a stranger, experimental, like... Alternative is the word I'm using right now, but I, I feel like I could go to a different term. Uh, hobbyist, uh, bedroom dev. Uh, I, I I used one weirdo again. games. What was that? <laughs> I said weirdo games. Yeah, They're weirdo, not all weirdo games. games. Some of them are weirdo <laughs> games. But yeah, some of them are. <laughs> I, I I was talking very recently about the the last year I organized the Sicko Showcase, uh, which had like because. People were talking about like, uh, you know, as, as people do when wholesome comes up. It's like, what if there were less wholesome things? And I was like, let me tell you about a thing that I made, <laughs> and it, <laughs> that had like he fucked a girl out of me and like coquette dragon and uh, nightmare temptation academy and other like very very uh, yeah. al- alternative sicko games, if you will. Because um, I like kinda, sicko games. I love. <laughs> I'm. Deadly. I'm a true sicko. I love dirty, grimy stuff. I love messy yeah. stuff, and uh, 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 I also love uh, uh, kind, wholesome stuff as well. Yeah, just... sometimes you need some, you need some, you need some cute stuff to right. To, it's to, you need some cotton candy oh. after you've eaten dirt off the floor for three hours. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the, I, I think the thing is that I'm realizing is that people just don't have balanced diets. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's really what it is. Like every time I see people get mad about this stuff, I'm like, you guys, you guys know that you can actually just have bowls. Like, there's these are not remotely exclusionary. Right, right. Ooh. That's my that's my that's really besides the fact that it feels a lot of it feels very nakedly commercial and safe and uh, puritanical. Uh, that's my yeah, problem some... with with coziness is that it feels like uh, you can like other things too. You know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, like that, it, like that. It's some kind. Also, like, and this is the this is the problem with a lot of things is that uh, most things are not reinventing. Uh, the, the, whatever ninety percent of the time, people are approaching them and they're reinventing something, something that was probably got reinvented thirty years ago. <laughs> yeah. Visual- I, I I really doubt the the argument about coziness versus uh like sicko stuff is is particularly new. I'm no, positive no. it exists for video games. <laughs> and, and I and I don't think it's a versus either. <laughs> I, think yeah. no. I think it's no, more. I don't, I don't mean it certainly yeah. shouldn't be. I think it, right. I think it becomes that for no reason. I th- I think a lot of people who like uh, quote unquote sicko stuff probably also like cozy stuff. It's it feels like it's more like yeah. it doesn't flow the other way around. I I can't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I see, if, if, I've seen people have these arguments for ten years, yeah. and I've seen people on both sides be like ludicrous about it. And I'm like, yeah. guys, like this is a stupid. Everyone is wasting our time on this. Right, like, right. Just, yeah. The a hunt for a monoculture is pointless. Yeah. Oh, totally. 
great yeah. games by great people. Yeah. <laughs> Just in general. Like, or like <laughs> questionable games by questionable people. Stick a, stick like, your shit. People games by people, people. <laughs> yeah, that is like you will find yeah. in any let me look at let me look at the latest indie apocalypse and um let me let me give a, a little look see here at forty one as I extend the show keep making it go longer and longer. Uh and go yeah yeah there is like yes just looking at it right now i can tell you there is uh stuff that is like ah nice and gentle and and like approachable and stuff that is uh difficult and unapproachable in different ways and even for these different games whether they're like dense weird puzzles or like uh uh, angry and aggressive art or uh just like obtuse art um yeah I like this little Tetris, Tetris looking game. That's mm. cute. That game is very cool. Yes. Yeah. Is, yeah. This is, is a good mix of this is a good mix of sicko and <gasps> sicko and yes, cute. yes. <laughs> mm. I yeah, think the fantastic thing with indie apocalypse is you can be a fan of like one of the genres, but suddenly you're introduced to this wealth of games and alternative experiences, which kind of expands your palette and yeah. outlook towards games, which is awesome. Yeah, there is there. That's that's kind of like my hope, and that's why I try to keep it varied. Because you might be like, listen, uh, I like you know like Berserk, <laughs> but I don't think it's for everybody. And I've told people that. Uh, there, there, and that's, there's plenty of things like that. Like I really like a Stalker, but I don't think everyone's gonna like it. Uh, and I think that's the case of like, uh, I was talking to you know homie Lentillion Boone of the of the latest commission game of I'm hungry, I'm healthy, I'm human. And they were talking, they were talking and mentioning like how it's like thought people would bounce off of it because I was saying how much I loved it. And they thought like, oh, maybe is it too obtuse, too hard? And I think I thought like, no, some people might find it really obtuse and hard to play. Uh, it is very, a very specific style of gameplay, but I love it. And I think those kind of um, singular like opinions and approaches to games, I think really opened some people's eyes, like where, where they turn some people off. Some people are like feasting on it. Mm. Oh, for sure. I th- I, th- I think the everybody game is an impossible game to look for. I'm going to make oh, one more yeah, diatribe yeah. before we close. Yes, go, now. go for it. <laughs> because you've inspired me. Yes. So this is my, this is my other, my quote unquote, perfect marketing strategy that yeah. I, I think will maybe pay off for me is like when i was making boss game i had so many random questions being like man is this gonna piss people off or is like is this gonna be too niche like you know i'm making already making like kind of dark soulsy whatever so like i think you're much better as an independent developer as all of us are as most of the people the people in the apocalypse the people who are not making hades money or whatever uh you probably aren't doing niche stuff. You, like you probably can afford to go more niche because you're much more likely to appeal to the people who are not getting fed at all. Yeah. Then you you are going to try and compete with like anyone with a million dollars, right? Like why mm. why do you want to try and put yourself in the same arena as someone who is you know who's got more money than you and will annihilate you in every sort of way that they can? Yeah. When you're like, why don't you just make it more gay? Or like, why don't you just make it weird? Oh, or like, put it on a platform that no one cares about or whatever? Because you like, I think you're more like you know I think boss game has some general appeal because it is just like a, a video game ass video game yeah and you right? and you have a, a couple of like, nice a key like key buzzwords you can throw out there that'll get people's attention I, yeah it, it is it is dark it, it is dark souls for queers yeah you but, can say you, if you, like, you, can, you can say gay <laughs> if you say that yeah. it's gay pixel dark souls on the internet yeah you'll get yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> like but at the same time, like, yeah but but at the same point like you know wh- why not embrace the like you don't have to yeah. hide the parts of your game that are weird and niche because like the right. people who are hungry for that stuff aren't aren't gonna get it from anyone else so they gotta get it from you which yeah. is like there's your marketing in right and and yeah. and, you, and that is and like uh that's kind of the the end result of the game you want to make it's not like you were going yeah. Game yeah. pixel dark souls and then making a video game from there you know yeah, yeah, it's it's very much it's me just, me hitting the things that I this is my my no more belt. 
Right, right. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> our interests happen to fall in line with uh, buzzwords we can use. Yeah. But like uh, ch- chasing those is kind of like you're right. It's it's a it's a fruitless task to chase those things as like you're as the reason you're making something. Yeah. No. Oh, for definitely. Sure. Yeah, but there's there's that risk, isn't there? Like with like enough polish and uh, it kind of like trying try to appeal to every single person, you you effectively nullify the the interesting uh, kind of like raw elements of your games. Like you know, like how many people are going to be like, oh, I wish something was like Call of Duty, but more <laughs> generic. Right. Like, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. No one wants that. What if so, I like, added you know, a talent tree? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for interrupting. No, it's, it's... no it's, it's amazing. Like talent tree Call of Duty would be phenomenal. Like, yeah, uh, exactly. I'm, I'm just gonna add talent trees to every game. I'm gonna add uh, visual novel. El- is it, what's the thing now? Is it now? I think it's visual novel elements is now the kind of which is to say stories with three quarters of portraits. Uh, I guess is a visual okay. novel element. Hmm. Uh, uh, I guess just, just just like remakes and like mashing together different elements of like all different games, it's like yeah, there's some interesting things to be found. Like picture if you were like doing Call of Duty, for example, yeah, I and mean, then you went from that shooter to like suddenly like a dating sim where you're like, oh, sorry, <laughs> what? <do> you... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but is it like with the right person, you could polish that and like sculpt that into something that could be really cool, even if it's like a bizarre quote-unquote unmarketable idea like put enough energy and interest into it and you, you can make anything appealing to some people yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. have to be appealing to everyone the and world's if... a big place and there are people with the same sicko taste that you have and if nothing oh, yeah. and if nothing else it might be appealing to me uh the the person <laughs> with the broadest sicko taste you can find uh i kind of love everything I'm like a pig in slop when it comes to everything. I'm just like, yes, give me. I mean, I make indie apocalypse, and I was talking an hour and a half ago about how I'm playing Tales of games. You know, <laughs> I kind of like. <laughs> I I love like dense, uh, 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 abstract, like in like incomprehensible art, and then I also like very straightforward stuff. It's like I have a very broad palette, and indie apocalypse is about take in that 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 weirdest stuff you can get that you know it is it is the home of the unmarketable as i said once <laughs> and that and um hopefully even if these games are marketable, i can put them in a home and then maybe i can trick someone into buying that home <laughs> uh maybe 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 who knows but anyway uh speaking of buying you can also go to indiepocalypse.com slash patreon and subscribe and get not only can you get the zine every month, but you can get tapes every month. You get physical copies of the zine every month. Or if you just want uh, the commission games every month, it's only five bucks for that. And that's like, honestly, I'm surprised anyone who likes games is not subscribed to that $5 thing. Cause like for less than 60 bucks a year or for 60 bucks a year, if you, oh. if you get that like bulk tier, man, these games, they're like the best of the indie space. I'm going out to all like what I think are like, hey, these are like the best indie devs around, you know? Uh, and I'm saying, you want to make a game? And a lot of times they're like, yes, I'd love to. And then they make a good game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you need you need official recognition, I think uh, last year, three or four of the commission games uh we're in IGF Nouveau. Uh, oh, nice! Oh. At least two had passed that had passed through uh, Titanic That's Two. Incredible. Titanic Two and Sylvie Lime were both IGF Nouveau nominees. Oh, Fuck the awesome. girl out of me also was, which was you know a quarter made for the apocalypse, sort of maybe. Taylor had said, "I want to make this for this thing," and then you know time passed. Games take a long time yeah. to make. Mm. Um, but yes, uh, uh, that's it. I'm shutting down the show. We're, we're oh Jesus Christ! It's, wow, wow. It's Good almost, luck, everyone. <laughs> it's almost three hours. <laughs> so sorry, prepare, prepare for this. Her, prepare for this Herculean task of this episode. Um. Anyway, I like doing the show. I like hanging out and talking to people. Uh, 
It's like it's the telephone. <laughs> thank you. It's just glad to have people on. Uh, thank you, Lily. Thank you, uh, Shalagoon. It's it's a a true treat to have people on the show. To it's my way of like I'm not I don't have the money to be one of those game dev people that like you haven't made a game. Well, how are you able to fly all over the world and give talks everywhere? What's going on? What exactly do you do? What what silver spoon are you supping off of? Um, <laughs> Uh, but I can't invite them all onto a, a, a talk show. <laughs> uh, but anyway, shut it down. Thank <laughs> you both for being here. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>